as usual, we'll get to some scriptures, we'll read some scriptures, and then we'll see what we come up with at the end. So let's first start with Proverbs chapter 25. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 28. I'll give everybody a moment to get there. Proverbs 25, verse 28. And it reads, He that has no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Let's go to Proverbs 16, verse 32. Proverbs 16, verse 32. He that is slow to anger is better than the might. And he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. Now let's turn to Ecclesiastes 7. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 9. Please ask these seven, verse nine. Be not hasty in your spirit to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosom of fools. So now let's go to James 1, 19. James 1, 19. Wherefore, my beloved brother, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man works not righteousness of Elohim. Let's go to Ephesians 4, 26. Ephesians 4, verse 26. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. And the last one, Mark 7. Mark chapter 7, starting at four, verse 14. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him, but the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. And he said unto them, are you so without understanding also? Do you not perceive that whatsoever thing from, from within or from without enters into the man, it cannot defile him, because it entereth not into his heart, but into the belly, and goeth out into the drunk, purging all meats? And he said, That which cometh out of the man, that defiles the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye. Blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. 
So if we start at Proverbs, where it says he that have no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. The purpose of having walls in the city was to keep the people inside the city safe and to keep a, a boundary of intruders to get into the city. And we start talking about being slow to anger. Whenever you let that anger, you become hasty in your spirit to be angry and it turns into wrath. That's when you start losing that control of the spirit. When you become hasty, quick to respond, quick to react without taking time to process. As James says, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Many of us have heard this many times. Being slow to respond and slow to react, having that control and rule of our, of our spirits. And Ephesians says to be angry, but don't sin. So it's okay to have the anger, but don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. So don't let that anger marinate to the point where you lose the control and then it turns wrath. And then and Mark where the Mashiach says, the thoughts of men that, that come out of men that defile these of that defiles us. The evil thoughts, the adulteries, the murders, all these things, thoughts may appear, but when we have control over these things, they don't manifest into actions. I uh, hope you got something from me. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom. I yield. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, that was uh, the dog toe uh, warning, uh, don't knock ya. Uh, shots fired. I hope everyone received the message who needed to receive the message. And when we hear things, as he said, uh, he made a statement and while he was bringing forth his message was that a lot of us read these scriptures, but actually do we apply them or do we recall them when we're in the moment? When we're in the heat of the moment, do we recall scripture? The scripture coming to our mind to tell us to govern ourselves. So it is a very, a very key lesson that if we want to keep our spirits protected and our salvation safe, that we need to learn to be slow to anger and keep the walls up, but that anger will take the walls down. And um, that was a good reminder, even for myself, because, you know, things is going on in this world right now. It's getting very irritating to me. And even things that go on within the nation get very irritating to me. And sometimes your frustration comes in. And so you have to make sure that we still slow, uh, slow in speech, watch what we say, and be mindful of the process and allow y'all to lead and guide and direct. So uh, that was perfectly on time, Adon, perfectly on time. And I, I would like to say, uh, Mr. Ricardo, the only reason why I did that just now, uh, what I just said is because a lot of times when the word comes forth, we all have to have conversion. We all need to repent. We all have things that we work on. We all slip sometimes in our thought process. But from my years of teaching, uh, I know a lot of times people get upset when a message is brought forth, when it steps on their toes and they feel like it's personal. Well, the word of Yah should be personal to each of us. However, when a messenger is delivering the word, it's not directed at anyone personally. It just falls in our ears and our hearts personally. If there's something that the Most High wants to prick our hearts, or our minds to focus on like, hey, the uh, the, the very uh, patience and self-control that you, you have grown to have, you may be slipping back a little way, getting a little bit more short fuse. So put it back in subjection. So when you hear those things, you don't be like, oh, he's talking to me. You be like, yeah, he's talking to me and I need to correct those things. And that's a part of, as we covered last night, about the set apart mindset, renewing the mind to prepare to hear and receive the word of Elohim, regardless of who the messenger is bringing it forth. And if, the, if it hurts your feelings or it steps on your toes, it means there's something wrong inside of you. If it provokes you to anger when you hear a word, that means there's something in you that needs to change because you can clearly see that the message that came forth offended you because you felt it. So learn to feel the word, not to be offended, but for transformation and for the renewal of the mind was to have the set apart your mindset. Uh, hallelujah, uh, hallelujah, Shabbat Shalom, Ms. Makai. Outstanding cultural portion by Zakane Yaquab and outstanding Phenomenal job by you, Adon Kanak. Y'all all praise, I'm esteem. Be to the most high. Yah, hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, Mishpaka. Um, We're going to open the floor now up for um, the halal yah moment. If anyone has any praise on their hearts that they would like to lift up before the most high, we're now opening the floor for the halal yah portion.
Praise y'all. All right, Adon Michael, the floor is yours, Aki. I just want to thank and praise y'all this morning um, for just the wonderful things that he's doing and in other people's lives um, that I'm being able to uh, witness and experience. I'm just like this morning, overjoyed. I'm just like overjoyed. It's, it's, it's just amazing to, like I say often, to be able to see. Um, sometimes I just think about <clears throat> where I've been and where I was and where the Most High has brought me into this place and how, you know, I was, I thought I could see, <laughs> you know, I, I really, nobody could not tell me I couldn't see, but the Most High had to show me that I could not see. And this ability to see, um, it is just like overwhelming sometimes to the point of being brought to tears out of such gratitude. And I think last, a couple of Shabbats ago, I talked about how, you know, I was the one who, you know, it said he entered, I think it was one of the towns and, you know, there were the lepers over there and they were calling out to him. And so he spoke back to him and he said, you know, go and do X, Y, and Z. He gave them instructions, you know, and I kind of think about that as like the Torah. He gave them instructions. And these people who were, you know, outcasts in their community, um, you know, probably loners, um, not really with anybody, um, they began to follow that instructions. And there was one of them that in the midst of doing what he was instructed to do, he realized he was changed. He realized he had been healed and immediately he turned around and he went back and he fell down and he began to worship. And I just pray that that'll be my continual heart. That will be the place that I know is my rightful place down before my master, my Abba, you know, worshiping him and adoring him, exalting him and him alone. Um, and then he said, weren't there 10? So the same thing that happened to him happened to the other 10, to the other nine. I'm thinking, you know, but they continue to go on and follow instructions. But I'm just so elated. It's like I want to burst just at the great things that I see the Most High doing in people's lives. So I just say, hallelujah, Abba. It's not always about what you do for me. I am just so grateful that I can witness. I can witness your greatness. I can witness your mercy. I can witness your kindness. I can witness your love toward your people. And I'm just so grateful to have eyes just to see him moving. So I say, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise Abba. House of yourself. Shabbat shalom, family. Um, first, I want to give honor and all praise to the Most High. Yeah. Um, I just want to give a little testimony. I was going to say something else, but since the cultural portion came forth and the um, two minute one it came forth, um, I just felt like it was speaking to me and Josiah. Um, so praise y'all that we are on this call today. Um, so yesterday, uh, it was just an incident that happened with Josiah. I'm not going to go into much detail here, um, but um, it was an incident that happened and to cause some people to come knock at my door. There were young children um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I was quick to anger because someone, you know, they come in to knock on my door for my child. So I was just quick to anger, quick to anger, slow to listen um, to what was being set forth here. Um, and this just lesson just resonated with me here. And then when I came back to reflect in the house, um, <clears throat> I was just first angry, then I became sad. I became so sad to the point I was gonna cry here because just, just the point of when we seeing um, just this day and time, kids growing up, 
um, and I'm asking for parents and no one is listening to me. It's just like, we don't, they don't have any respect for the elders. I'm not an elder here, but I'm an elder to them here. Um, it just seemed a lack of respect and just, it made me sad because, you know, these kids have no guidance. Maybe they don't have any um, parents in a home that care, but I wasn't that light at that point in time. And I had to go back and reflect on myself because I want Josiah to be a light. I want myself to be a light to anyone that comes around me um, and encounters me or Josiah here. Um, he stated also that he took heed too, like y'all was talking to him um, because Josiah is quick to anger um, and slow to listen here. And we just talk to have this person's feelings here. So I just want to say hallelujah that we was on this call and that I heard and that um, another thing that resonated that, you know, I, I'm waking up to the truth, um, but we need to move forth and be due diligent and to receive our inheritance in, um, in Yah here. Um, so I'm just in tears now because it's just like, I don't want to lose my kids to the world. You know, I want them to be a light to everyone. And I just want to pray and pray to Abba that he continue to work on us and have, you know, and be a light to the world and not be so quick to anger and just to listen here. So I just want to say hallelujah and I yell. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise and esteem to the most high. And children, I mean all children, please listen to the love of a mother towards the children and from what she's seeing and what she's crying out and that she doesn't want to lose the children to the world. No parents wants to lose you to the world. And if we're trying to train you up in this Torah and in the Ruach or the spirit of the Most High, please, please honor thy father and thy mother and honor Yah with all your being. Please listen and don't be consumed with the world. Hallelujah. Akoti Shakira. Sister, you're dragging, I believe. All honor, all esteem to my Abba, Yahuwah. I'm so ill. Can you hear me? You, you are you're dragging. Can you hear me? You, you're dragging. Can you hear us? <laughs> Shakira. I think she got dropped out. Did she drop off? Sh Shakira, can you we can't hear you? How about now? Yes, good. It's good. Yes. Yes, we can hear you now. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we can hear you now. Yes. Hello. We we can hear you, sis. Can you hear us? We can hear you. Okay. I, I'm on Talia's phone. Um we can hear you. Can you hear me? All right. I'm so sorry about that. Um, am I clear? Yes. I just want to, um, oh, excuse me, let me get back my thoughts. Um, I just want to give all honor, all esteem to my Abba, Yah. I'm just so grateful and so thankful for this day because this is the day that Yah has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And, oh man, I just want to just uplift and I want to sing a song song I was gonna sing oh man I had my my mind on the song it, I forgot oh let me see um song was I gonna sing okay well maybe it's the, I'm not supposed to sing today but um Shabbat Shalom everyone Shabbat Shalom all praises to Yah Hallelujah. If that song come back to your heart, please let us know so you can send that song up. All praise and esteem to the Most High. Shabbat Shalom. Ima Shoshana. Shabbat Shalom, Ms. Bukar. All praise is honor and esteem to Yah. Always the um, culture and the two-minute warning was very, very on point. I was thinking about the um, culture of what Ima Audrey had said, because I remember when I was doing a, um, insurance and 
who I was going to leave the insurance to if anything happened to me. And I thought about it. And it gave, I went into a deep thought. I was like, okay, this child is this way and this child is that way. And this, I have four kids. So I was like, okay, Father, whom should I leave this to? Who should I put the name in? And the Father directed me because of the character of that person. So it is so important about um, the culture and the inheritance and the character of a person of whom you leave your inheritance to. And the um, two minute warning about um, governing your thoughts, <laughs> that's powerful. You truly have to think about what you're gonna say in a given moment, because in the heat of a moment, you can just go off and escalate a situation so quickly. And as I shared, um, I think it was last week that um, I was instructing my ex that I couldn't do something for him because of who I am in the father and I would be in agreement with what he was doing and he got annoyed and, and I was like, oh no, I'm not gonna go there with him. And so I just calmed the situation and, and, and it just eased off and it, it just dropped off because I was like, father, give me what to say to this man because <laughs> I don't want to cause no seed. So the fact that Yahuwah is the center of me and I'm so thankful for it. He is my joy and he is my hope for tomorrow. So I'll sing this short little version of it. Yahuwah, you're the center of my joy. All that is, all that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the source of my contentment, hope for all I do. Yahuwah, you're the center of my joy. Hallelujah, are you? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Rockets Kodash name. Hallelujah. Total for that, Iman. A Koti Talia. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, family. I'm here to give praise, glory, and honor to Yahuwah and to esteem his name. All glory, praise, and honor and esteem belongs to him. And I would like to share the song I've known this song since I was a little child, but many songs that came to me since I came in this walk, because growing up, I, these songs never come to my heart, but now I'm in the walk, all the songs, and I'm here to share it with y'all. Operator, operator. Give me Yahuwah on this line. I want to hear from you, Yah. I want to hear from you, Yah. I want to hear from you. Essential, never busy. He always on this line. You can talk to Yah almost every time. He's a royal service. He's free for one and all. When you get in trouble, give this royal line a call. Telly, telephone to glory. Oh, what joy divine. I can see the power moving on this line he's a royal service he's free for one and all when you need salvation give this royal line a call tell it telephone to glory oh what joy divine i can feel the power moving on this line he's a royal service 
He's free for one and all. When you need repentance, give this royal line a call. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise his name, glory, glory, and all esteem belongs to you. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, I'm sorry, Maureen. I thought. Oh, told I told us I can. Yeah, I made it back. Told us, sir. Hallelujah. Uh, Koti Rose. Shabbat Shalom, family. Shabbat Shalom. Man, um, I just want to say Toda Yah for the warning today. As you all know, that this is something that I've constantly confessed or asked for prayers for. And I feel like the most high, it was just like, okay, girl, I'm not playing with you no more. This is it. So I'm just grateful for that, that he just loves me that much, that he continues to pull my ears and I just pray that, you know, his Ruach will continue to guide me and give me the tools that I really need to practice that because that, 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 that anger is, is ugly. Um, it's very ugly for me. And I wanted to te- um, give a testimony of this past week with my Ima. Um, she, she back in November had to have brain surgery and she had been in rehab for the for three weeks and this past Monday um, I had to bring her back to the emergency room because she developed some blood clots while she was at the rehab and I'm just grateful for the most high for his divine timing and his divine instructions um, because had I, had I not gotten her to the hospital when I did according to the doctors she would have pretty much died at the rehab because she had so many and one of them dislodged and went to her lung. So I'm just grateful for this, Knessa, for all the prayers. I know you guys always remember us in prayer and I'm just grateful for that. And I just wanted to share and say that she's home now, just watching her and making sure that everything (coughs) continued to go according to the Most High's will. So I yield to the Yah. Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Shabbat Shalom. May the most high continue to bless your iman. And I just want to throw something out, Akoti. Um, it's something that we all still have to work on within ourselves. But uh, if this gives you any encouragement, remember Moshe, he got upset with the people one time and it kept him getting into the promised land. So uh, let us pray that Yah keeps us in a calm ruach so that we don't we do not do the things that while we are laboring to walk righteously, that we allow our temperaments to uh cause us to lose our salvation. So hallelujah for the Yah's warning on this day. Hallelujah. Ima Audrey. I just want to lift up the name of Abba today. I just want to proclaim that my Yah is an awesome Yah. Um, I once had a prayer partner and she would taunt me all the time by saying, you know, I'm his favorite. And it's like, why does she always say that? But then as you think about it, we should all strive to be his favorite, you know, by, by being obedient and keeping his commandments and trying to please him, just like we did our physical parents. We have to do the same thing with him. And when you think about the fact that uh, that we was the apple of his eye, these are the things that we should be striving for as we read these scriptures and what have you. Uh, we should be the same way. So today, I would like to sing a song. I'm a little congested, but I made a promise that I would sing a song as an offering every Shabbat. So today is no different. <clears throat> Lead me, guide me along the way. Oh, if you lead me, I cannot stray. Yeah. Let me walk each day with thee. Lead me, oh yeah, lead me. Help me tread in the paths of righteousness. Be my aid when Satan and sin oppress. I am putting all my trust in thee. Lead me, oh Yah, lead me. 
I am lost if you take your hand from me. I am blind without thy light to see. Y'all just always let me thy servant be. Lead me, oh Yah, lead me. Lead me, guide me along the way. For if you leave me, I cannot stray. Yah, let me walk each day with thee. Lead me, oh Yah, lead me. Hallelujah. 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 Barak is Kodash name. Hallelujah. Akoti Shakira. Shalom. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. We hear you. How about now? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Sort of. Okay. All right. Shabbat Shalom again. Yeah. Yeah, she's having technical difficulties. Uh, sorry about that, LKT. Uh, Shah Shamar. Shabbat Shalom, can you hear me? Ten. Ten. Yeah, I just want to give praise to the Most High. Yeah. Uh, you know, when is it, whenever there's an opportunity to give praise to the Most High, yeah, you know, I, I try, you know, to give my praise. But, you know, to that, I didn't really... I was trying to think of something, you know, to get praise to the most high for. I you know it's a lot of things, but sometimes I feel like, you know, I'm uh, I'm saying the same things. But um, I just want to give all praise to the most high, you know, for another Shabbat day, for the mercy of the most high, the love of the most high. And uh, recently I was thinking about, you know, just preparation. You know, the world's changing. I don't know exactly what's going to happen in the future or when it's going to happen. But, you know, preparation, not just, you know, the physical preparation, whether it be, you know, I know people say get a bug out bag and things like that in that sense, but I think, you know, the best preparation is, you know, getting a, a stronger relationship with the Most High, yeah. Um, then I was just thinking about just the idea of, you know, trusting, just trusting, like whether people trust in cars or the government and technology, you know, and it, this is going to be a time where, you know, or there's still as many times in my life where I couldn't, I had to trust in the Most High. You know, no one else could help me. So that's kind of the mindset that I try to have, uh, you know, going forward, though. Of course, you know, um, there are some things that I depend on in this life, whether it be, a, you know, a job or, uh, you know, communicating with certain people. But, uh, you know, the main goal is to always trust in the Most High, yeah. And I just want to give praise to the Most High, yeah, you know, for putting that on my spirit, my reward, uh, you know, to have that understanding to prepare myself. And another thing I was thinking about, um, you know, I had family members, uh, you know, that they're, they're not necessarily in the walk. And, you know, sometimes it's sad, you know, the things that they go through, the things that they say. You know, I want to help them, but it's hard to help people that don't, you know, want help. So the best that I could do is, um, you know, just pray for them. And that's something that the Most High um, put in my rug as well last week. You know, the family member, you know, I tried to help them, but, you know, it's sad. They don't necessarily want to receive the help. So the only thing I could do is just pray for them. So I just give all praise to the Most High God, you know, for the blessings that he gave, you know, given to me and the blessings that he has given, you know, to us on this call. And I'm um, just, hello, yeah, his Shabbat is a delight. Are you? Hallelujah, hallelujah. All praise, honesty, me to the Most High, yeah. Um, before we go forward, uh, Bat Zion, I don't know if you're in position, but, uh, uh, Shakira wanted to know if someone could sing in her place because she don't have sound. And the song is Oh Give Thanks unto Yahuwah for he is told. So Batzion, I don't know if you are in a position to sing, but the sister want to know if someone oh, yeah. was. Hallelujah. I told her. Hallelujah. Okay. 
Oh, give thanks to Yahuwah, for he is tov. Yes, he is tov. Oh, give thanks to Yahuwah, for he is tov. Yes, he is tov, for he is worthy. Worthy. For he is tov. Yes, he is tough, for he is worthy, worthy, for he is tough. Yes, he is tough. Hallelujah. 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 And that's how you be a family. Thank you for that, sister. Thank yeah. you, Batsy. <laughs> go ahead, Maury, Hanny. If you want to pick up a first up, go ahead, Maury. I hear you in the background. <laughs> No, it touched me. You see, I had to jump in there with a, you know, me is so, man. I, you know, it, it, it jumped out my spirit right there. More way, I'm going to yield now, but you know I don't do the same. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. We're going to get ready to open up with Teflon. Zakeen uh, Eliyahu, are you in position where you can do the opening Teflon, sir? Zakeen may be in transit. All right. Zakin Yakov, if you don't mind, can you do one more opening prayer for us, sir? Khan Mori. Hello, Yah. Hello, Yah. <clears throat> Barakata Yahweh Malakawala. Blessed are you, Yah, King everlasting, King of this universe. Abba Yahweh, we just come to you as your humble servants, your Yaladi, your children, Abba Yah giving you all praise, honor, and esteem for you are worthy, Abba Yah, beyond worthy. You are a high tower. You have us under your wing, Abba Yah, and in your hands. You bless and keep us. All praise, honor, and esteem is yours, Abba Yah, and none else. Halal Yah. And we are so grateful, Abba Yah, that you bless this day and set it apart, Abba Yah, that we can come before you humbly, gratefully, cheerfully, to bask in your glory, Abba Yah, to fellowship with our brothers and sisters, our Imams, our Zakamin, our Maureen, Halal Yah. And Abba Yah, we just give you thanks for your greatness, that you touch and heal those that are afflicted, Abba Yah, that you give shalom to those that have vexed Ruach, that you order our steps, Abba Yah, and that you wash us clean with your word and shape us into vessels of your will. We just want to be the light, Abba Yah, that you set us apart for. We want to walk in all your ways, we want to reflect your image and your likeness, Abba Yah. And we just ask, Abba Yah, please, that you continue to bless and protect and keep all of us from hate, harm, and danger, that you continually bend your ear, Abba Yah, to hear our praises, hear our petitions, Hear our cry, Abba Yah, as your scattered children to the four corners of this earth. And we just pray, Abba Yah, that our reasonable sacrifices and our offerings are sweet savor to your, to your nostrils, Abba Yah. Please continue to inspire and bless the Maureen, the shepherd that you placed over your children, Abba Yah, your sheep, your flock. Continue to give them the messages for us, Abba Yah. Feed us from your table. We are so blessed to be Mishpaka, and we are so blessed, Abba Yah, that you've opened our eyes to who we are and whose we are and the purpose that you set us apart. In all things, Abba Yah, Tob and Ra. We say Toda Rabbah. 
Thank you so much, Abba. Blessed are you, Yahweh. Blessed is your name, Yahweh. And blessed is he that comes in your name, Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai Mashiach. In the name of your only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, our Messiah. Amen. Wa Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen, well, amen. We now have the reading of the mitzvah, or the reading of the commandments by Adon Kanakya, found in Exodus, or Shemot, chapter 20. And Elim spake all these words, saying, I am Yahweh, which have brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no Elim before me, you should not make unto any graven image or in likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You should not bow down yourself to them, nor serve them. For I, Elohim, am a jealous ill, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and show mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. You should not take the name of Elohim in vain, for y'all not hold him guiltless to take his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of y'all leave in it. You should not do any work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, your manservant, nor your maidservant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger. That is within your gates. For in six days y'all made heaven and earth to see it all amidst and rest the seventh day. Wherefore y'all bless the Sabbath day and holiday. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land which y'all leave give you. You should not murder. You should not commit adultery. You should not steal. You should not bear false witness against your neighbor. You should not covet your neighbor's house. You should not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. All right. Turn the sound off. Shabbat shalom, Shabbat shalom, Mishpaka, Shabbat shalom, all praise, honor, esteem be to the most high, Yah, Barak, or bless his set apart name, hallelujah. All right, Mishpaka, we're going to um, just give a little review from what we was going into last night. And last night, we was focusing on our Torah study, we was focusing on a set apart mindset, or a better term to be used would be a Yah mindset and a renewing of our mind. And when we was covering it, we was focusing on uh, where do you go to find out how to renew your mind, how to prove what's acceptable in the sight of Elohim. And we know that's going back to the Torah. The series that we've been in is the image of Elohim or the image of God, right? And we've covered that man was created in the image of Elohim. And we've also covered how in the very beginning, after the Most High created man in his image, after his likeness, that he breathed into him the breath of life, right? He gave him righteousness in a set-apart way, set-apart ruach, but the adversary came in and corrupted man's thought process, which started making man walk from the image of the Elohim into the image of the created, all right? So we're going to start off as we normally do for this particular topic with John, a Yehukanon 4 and 23 through 24, and then I'm going to ask Adon Uziel, Kanaka, if you pick up John 4, 23 through 24, I'm going to ask Adon Uziel to go back to Shemot chapter 20, verses 1 through 6. Kanaka, I would just like you to start the lesson off for us today with Yahukanon 4, 23 through 24. John 23 through 24. So today we're going to be focusing on the image of jealousy is what we're titling today. We're going to be focusing on the image of jealousy. So John 24, 23 through 24, come on. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Elim is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. So the hour is now come where the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Elohim is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So the whole focal point is we want to get the true identity of the Most High, the true image of the Most High, so we would fully know how to worship him and know if we're actually worshiping him or something or someone else, right? That's the whole purpose of this. And we also want to know if we're actually walking in his image after his likeness. And as we covered last night, 
He said he's raised us up to be a set apart nation, a set apart priesthood, and we're supposed to be spiritual in nature. So we're supposed to turn into a spiritual being that's created in the image after the likeness of the most high. So you already know we went over the words for uh, image and likeness. I'll do that once again for a review. So just definition of image, a visual representation of a person or something, the word likeness, the fact or quality of being alike or the resemblance. So we should be like the most high, we should resemble the most high. Identity, the fact of being who or what a personal thing is. Second definition for identity is the unique set of characteristics that can be used to identify a person as themselves and no one else, all right? So I just wanna keep going into that because we need to continue to have these at the forefront of our mind because if man is created in the image of Elohim after his likeness, the only way you're gonna know that is you're gonna have to know, do you resemble the most high? And if it says that he is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, the way that you can tell if you are actually worshiping the image of the most high and if you're in the image of the most high is if spiritually you're in alignment with the word of the most high. In our lesson last week, we have established that the Torah is spiritual. The Torah is just and good. So the law of the most high is spiritual. So if you want to be spiritual and you want to be set apart or holy to the most high, we have to go to his laws, statutes, and commandments to understand what that spirit looks like. And anything that's breaking or contrary to the laws, statutes, and commandments of the most high is not the image of Elohim, all right? So today we're gonna to be focusing on the image of jealousy because we are very visual people. Like in the cultural portion of ways I came broke down, uh, you're born into your heritage, but you have to uh, actually earn and you have to grow and mature into your, uh, in your inheritance. So there's something that has to be done. And he went to Abraham and he showed how he did things. We are visual people. We learn by sight a lot of times, what we can visually see. So I wanna go to some of the attributes of the Most High, which also gives the image of the Most High and also the image of the beast, all right? So we're gonna be kind of covering two things here today. And we've already had previous lessons on the mark of Yah and the mark of the beast. And the reason why all these things are important to keep in mind is because we're gonna see that through the word from the beginning to the end, the Most High has always prepared us to be set apart unto him and warned us of what the mark of the beast was from the very beginning and what the image of the beast was and how we should not partake of these things. So let's get started with today's lesson. Adon Uziel, if you would, Shemot, commonly called Exodus 20, verses 1 through 6. Panaki, I would like for you to get Shemot chapter 34. Shemot, commonly called Exodus chapter 20, starting at verse 1. And it reads, And Elohim spoke all these words, saying, I am Yahuwah Elohim, which have brought you out of the land of Mizraim, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other Elohim before me. You shall not make unto you any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heavens above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down yourself to them nor serve them. For I, Yahuwah Eloweka, am a jealous El, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and guard my commandments. Hallelujah. So what the first thing I want to point out here is the sixth verse. The most I say, he shows mercy to thousands of them that love him and keep his commandments. So it is letting you know that the most high loves who? Those who keep his commandments. And if he is a spirit and it's the time and the season for the true worshipers to worship him in spirit and in truth, we don't see him physically. We see him spiritually. And he left a word that was written or given to the children of Israel to follow, to know how to be accepted of him, how to be set apart of what's commonly called holy and what would actually prove our love to him so that he can love us, right? So what he's letting us know is, I'm the one who brought you out of the bondage, the suffering, and all these things in Mitzrayim or in Egypt. I delivered you. I brought you to me. I'm letting you know who I am, and I'm the only Elohim that you should worship and you should serve. But what I want to focus on is four and five. You shall not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that's in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. I'm going to pause it for a moment. So again, in our lessons, in our studies, we are not trying to be purposely offensive to anyone, but we never want to be offensive to the most high. That's, that comes first and foremost in our hearts, right? So if we say something that may sound foreign to you, 
it may be formed because we're supposed to be peculiar to the most high. So if you have images in your house of an image of what's so-called called the son of Elohim, that needs to come down. If you have images in your house of so-called angels and things like that, they need to come down. See, as, as it says in the New Testament of the Brick Kadashah, people establish their own righteousness, but have not submitted to the righteousness of Elohim. So images were not to be created. Images were not to be made. Images were not to be bowed down to. And any image that we have up physical represent the most high that we are bowing before, we accept it or we acknowledge it as something important to the most high, someone important to the most high is a form of idolatry. And the most high said, you shall not. So this is not, and you know, one of the, the, the things that I'm getting really tired of hearing is when people say, well, that's not my religion. Well, first of all, we should have a religion anyway. It's the word of God, the word of Elohim. We can't have the same Bible and think we have different religions. It's the word of Elohim and his word is not with any private interpretation. So basically what I'm saying is, whether you're a Christian, whether you're an Islam, whether you're a Hebrew Israelite, whether you're a different denomination of Hebrew Israelites, the Most High said that you are not to make, not based on religion, this is the word of Elohim. You shall not make any graven image and you shall not bow down to them. So if people sell graven images, they're up in the church houses. Those things should come down. And I pray that through the lesson today, it helps if individuals are at a place where they won't take them down. You take the images down in your mind and start understanding where you at may not be the house of Elohim. You shall not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. Why? For I, Yahuwah, your Elohim or your God am a jealous Elohim. So I want to focus on the word for jealous. It's the word there, quana, right? But let me just give us a definition of jealous. Let's think of one moment. We're going to first define the word of jealous, just so we can put it back in our mind. Jealous. It said envious, covetous, desirous, resentful, grudging, bitter, spiteful. That's one definition. Another definition is suspicious, distrustful, mistrustful, doubting, insecure, anxious. And another definition is protective, defensive, vigilant, or watchful, right? So one of the examples they use uh, uh, just in the dictionary for jealousy is a husband or a wife that feels as if their significant other may be dealing with someone else. It's that feeling that you have of, I feel uncomfortable. I feel upset. I can't stand what I think is going on. And then once you know it's going on, that jealousy really kicks in or that anger kicks in, that resent kicks in. The reason why I want us to focus on this with that visual is because we ourselves know what it feels like to be jealous. So remember, the most high has attributes. We were created in his image after his likeness. Though we may not be following him, there's still certain attributes that we have that we can identify with. So we know what jealousy feels like to us. And an example or another example they gave with jealousy is someone obtaining and having riches or something that you don't have and you're jealous of what they have, right? So with understanding of the definition of jealousy, the most high is saying what? He is a jealous Elohim. Not that he's one of the petty, oh, you jealous? Not that he's petty-minded. He's already said, I brought you out. I delivered you. You were crying out. You asked for salvation. I saved you. And the first thing you're going to do 40 days out is turn back to idols. How do you think that make him feel that I did all this for you whom I love and what you do is establish idols immediately? I delivered you. I heard your cry. I came and I provided for you what you had need of. I gave you salvation and you still want to worship pagan gods. How do you think that makes the most I feel? He said, don't create an image, but we have an image saying, this is the son of Elohim or this is God. He hates that. He's jealous of that because it's not him. And you're giving his honor to someone else and his praise to something else and not him. You're not obeying his commands or we're not obeying his commands if we do this. So it says, you shall not bow down yourself to them nor serve them for I, Yah, the Elohim, am a jealous Elohim visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children until the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Who hates him? Not many people in the world that they want to say they hate God. 
But if you have an image up and you love that image, what's the opposite of love? You actually hate the most high, at least in his sight, that's how he sees it. That's how he views it. But he winks at us at our ignorance. So when we ignorantly think that we have these images and these idols up, he winks at us and he gives us an opportunity to wake up to the truth. But now when you hear the word and you can comprehend the word, the most high says, make no, bow down to none. Make no images and bow down. Do not bow to them. Don't have any other thing before me. We should not do those things. The most high hates that. And he says he's a jealous Elohim. So now he's giving you a spiritual image of his thought process and how he views things from his viewpoint. Hanaki, I pick up in um, uh, Shemot 34, 10 through 17. Uziel get Deborah 32 or Deuteronomy 32, 15 through 24. Hanaki 34, 10 through 17. Shemot Exodus 34, verse 10. And he said, Behold, I make a covenant. Before all your people, I will do marvels. Such has not been done in all the earth, nor in any nation. And all the people among you, among which you are, shall see the work of Yah. For it is a terrible thing that I will do with you. Observe you that which I command you this day. Behold, I drive out before you the Amorite and the Canaanite and the Hittite and the Perizzite and the Hivite and the Jebusite. Take heed to yourself, lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land with you goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of you. But you shall destroy the altars, break their images, and cut down their groves. For you shall worship no other Elohim, for Yah, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous Elohim. Lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go whoring after their gods, and do a sacrifice unto their gods, and one call you, and you eat of his sacrifice. And you take up their daughters unto your sons, and uh, their daughters go whoring after their gods, and make your sons go whoring after their gods. You shall make you no molten gods. Hallelujah. So the Most High is also still uh, in this book when Moses is telling the children of Israel, behold, I make a covenant before you, before all the people. And I do all these marvels before you all. I provided all this stuff for y'all. Is what the Most High is saying. He says, observe you that which I command you this day. So observe. That word there for observe is the Hebrew word shamar. Shamar means to guard, to protect, to keep. So the words that I've given to you, the words that the Most High given to Moses to give to the children of Israel, the Most High said, you guard, you protect that. So if anyone says that the laws are done away with, the Most High himself said, do what? Guard my words. Guard my covenant. You protect that. Why? This is the way to life for you. This is your return back to my image. See, what has you out of the image of Elohim is the fact that when Shaitan told Adam and Eve in that garden, they can do it contrary to the way that the Most High said it. This is the same thing. Whenever you turn away from his laws, that is you turn it away from the Most High into the image of the beast. All right? So he says, observe or guard you that which I command you this day. Behold, I drive up before you the Amorite, the Canaanite. So listen. Protect what I've given you, honor what I've given you, love what I've given you, and I'm driving out all the nations from before you that would do you any harm. You have nothing to worry about. As long as you keep my commandments, you have salvation, you will have rest. That's a promise. That's a covenant. That's an agreement. But it's conditional. It's based upon your obedience. 12. Take heed, that word for take heed again is the same word, Shema. Take heed or guard yourself. Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, with you go, uh, lest it be a snare in the midst of thee. So now he's saying what? Guard yourself. Lest you make a covenant, meaning protect your thought process. Protect these commandments of this heart that I've given you. These commandments, guard them. Because if you don't guard them, what will end up happening is you will end up going and making a covenant with the inhabitants of the land in which I told you don't make covenants with. You will end up serving their gods and following their customs and their traditions in which I told you not to do. But ye shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves. Why? Because we're commanded not to make any images, and we're also commanded that if we come into a place 
that we are not going to inhabit, that someone inhabited before us that was driven out, the residue of the way that they worship is supposed to be torn down. I want us to hear this clearly because there's a visual that I hope everyone can see as we go forward. We have been instructed not to make any image, not to bow before any image. And then when I bring you into a place and when I move the people from out of the place that was inhabited in an area before you, when you come into that place, you tear down the images of their gods because you do not have any image besides me, my spiritual image, my Torah. Know what I command of you. That's all I want y'all to have. Because we've already covered previously in the, in the message, because the children of Israel or mankind was supposed to be created in the image of the Most High. We're supposed to walk in the likeness of the Most High. We don't have images, idols, wood or stone, gold or silver. So he's told us not to make, not to bow before. And when you come someplace that has created something, tear it down. That's very key. 14. I want y'all to hear this. For you shall worship no other Elohim or no other God. For Yahuwah, whose name is what? <laughs> so we already know Yah's name is what? It's Yah, right? But now it says that Yah's name is what? Jealous. Yah's name is jealous. So the Hebrew students already know the word for name is Shem. Shem means character authority also, not just the phonetic sound of how you pronounce the name or how you spell his name, but it's also the character of his name. So what he's letting you know is he's letting you know his character, a part of an attribute of his character, of his spiritual being, his thought process. Take heed to thyself, sleek out, sleek out, for thou shalt worship no other Elohim, for Yah, whose name is Quana or is jealous, is a jealous Elohim. So the most I let you know, I don't share. I don't want you to halfway honor me and honor someone else. I want all of your heart. As it says in the book of Deborah and Deuteronomy, Shema Yisrael, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah Akal. While Hapta et Yahuwah Eloheka, Bakal Lababaka, Ubekal Nefeshka, Ubekal Miodika. You should love Yah your Elohim with all your heart with all your mind, with all your being. The most I want a part of you, he wants all of you. And if you're giving a part of yourself to someone or something else, he's jealous of that. Because he's a jealous Elohim, not a petty Elohim. He's our Abba or our father. Now put it in the mindset. You got some people that like to play with words. Oh, so God jealous? Yeah, that's what he said. He's a jealous Elohim. Now you as a parent, we heard the love of a mother for her children on this call day saying she don't want her children to be given to the world. Imagine your children becoming sodomites. How you gonna feel about that? You gonna love that? Imagine your children are full-time adulterers, robbers and thieves, bait robbers and murderers, and they all on the news representing your name. How you gonna feel about that? You taught them the right way. You provided everything for them and they gonna do that nonsense. How you gonna feel about that as a parent? So before we go into the petty mindset where some people wanna go that don't wanna believe in the most high, I wanna try to justify what they do. The most high is a jealous Elohim, and we're supposed to be like him. So he does not, he cannot stand. And let me, let me, let me water it down a little bit and bring it back to a parent. You do everything for your children, and they love someone else more than they love you. How are you gonna feel about that? I raised you, I protected you, I fed you, I paid your way through school. And when you get on your feet, and you get what you need and you think now you grown and you adult. Now I'm not going to respect and honor my mother, my father, and I'm going to serve someone else. I'm going to love somebody more. How are you going to feel about that? See, we are visual people. That's what we do to the most high when we have these images up. That's what we do to the most high when we don't honor and keep his Shabbat. That's what we're doing to the most high. We're saying his laws are done away with. As the parent, let me ask you, when have your rules ever changed for your children? So you teach rules of love and you teach rules of respect. And if you think this is respect and you think this is love, do you ever allow your children to later on start disrespecting you and love you how they want to love you and not the way that you told them that you want to be loved? We got to get visual with this. So the teaching that the law is done away with, the most I hates that. Because you're serving another guy when you believe like that. 
for Yah, sh for you shall not worship no other Elohim, for Yah, whose name is jealous, is a jealous Elohim. Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land. And we've already read all that. So it said, you shall not make a graven image. And if you don't get yourself together, you don't God to protect the way. And you give your sons, your daughters unto them. They're going to go a whoring after their gods. Next reader, please. Deborah 32, Deuteronomy 32, 15 through 24. Don't Uziel, Hanaki, I get Nahum 1, 2 through 7. Deuteronomy and Deborah 32, 15 through 14. Deborah. I get Nahum 1, chapter 1. Yes, sir, Don. Deborah, commonly called Deuteronomy chapter 32. Verse 15 through 22. But Yashurun wax fat and kick. You are waxing fat. You are grown thick. You are covered with fatness. Then he forsook Eloah, which made him, and oh, lightly right, esteemed. Hold right, that for a second, Adon. Let's talk about this for a moment. So Yashurun is another name that's used for Israel. So this is another term that's used for Israel. So it says, Yashurun wax fat and kick. Thou art fat, are waxing fat. Thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook Elohim, which made him. I just made a statement about how we feel after we fatten our children up, after we fed them all, like care for them, protected them, guarded them, paid their way through school. Then you go to somebody else. I got my own place now. I got my own job. I'm going to serve like this. This is what Israel do. The Most High brings them from false gods, brings them from tribulation, from death, from all types of suffering, from all manner of wickedness, brings them to himself, teaches them his way to return them back to his image after his likeness. And once he blesses Israel, what does Israel normally do? Once you become blessed, once you have what you've asked for, what you want, you think it's your world now. You think you did it for yourself. So we go away from serving the most high and we start doing what we want to do. And this is what he's saying here. You have waxed fat and you have turned from the Elohim and you've turned from the Elohim of your salvation, from your rock. From your stability, continue to read. Verse 16, they provoke him to jealousy with strange mighty ones. With abominations provoke they him to anger. They sacrifice him to devils, not to Eloah, to mighty ones whom they knew not, to new mighty ones that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begat you, you are unmindful and have forgotten El that formed you. And when Yahuwah saw it, and he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. So let's pause right here for a second, Adon. Pause right here for a second. So now they wax fat, they did what? They provoked the Most High to jealousy. The Most High is not just walking around jealous, like I'm just walking around angry and mad and I'm jealous. No, he's jealous with a purpose or a reason when we provoke him to jealousy. But in his word, he gave us warning not to provoke him to jealousy. I am a jealous Elohim. If I catch you doing something wrong, and once I know that you know that you're doing it wrong, I'm going to judge your behind. That's how the Most High operates. So he's letting us know his nature. He's letting us know his spiritual image. He's letting us know his mindset, his thought process, so that we can get in the right mindset to be in his image and walk in the salvation that he's called us to. It said they sacrifice, they provoke him to jealousy with strange gods, with abominations, and abominations, wickedness, disgusting things. And they provoked him to anger. So they provoked him to jealousy with strange gods and abomination, and they provoked him to anger. Who are they? Israel. They sacrifice unto devils, not unto Elohim. So now the one who made them fat, <laughs> they don't give him sacrifice. They don't give him praise. They give him praise and sacrifice to what? to idols, to devils, to false gods whom they didn't know and their fathers didn't know. Newly gods. And y'all look at this. These, they gave these to these new gods that newly came up whom their fathers feared not. But of the rock that beget you, you are unmindful and have forgotten Elohim of the God that formed you. So the Elohim of the God that created man in his image after his likeness and created Israel to be a royal priesthood Israel, when they got blessed or received their blessings, let me correct my English. When Israel received their blessings, we're online. I, I want people to be talking about my Ebonics talk. <laughs> but when we received our blessings, what did Israel do? They waxed fat 
and they turn on the Most High and they establish new gods who their fathers didn't fear or that the new gods could also be the gods of the lands who they want to observe and follow. And when Yah saw it, he did what? He hated them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. Pick up a verse 20, Adon. Verse 20. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not ill. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with the foolish nation. For a fire is kindled in my anger and shall burn unto the lowest shield and shall consume the earth with her increase and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. 23, I will heap mischiefs upon them. I will send my arrows upon them. They shall be burnt with hunger and devoured with burning heat and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust. Let's pause, the right there. Let's pause right there, Aki. Toda, Toda. So if you read the rest of that chapter, you're going to see all other types of things Most High say he would do, right? So now the Most High is angry. The Most High is jealous. The Most High is upset. He said, I see this. And what's happening with their sons and daughters? So the Most High said, I'm pretty much going to close my ear to them. I'm going to discontinue blessing them, says the Most High. And he said, I will hide my faith from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a forward, not a humble generation, a very hard to deal with generation, a stiff neck generation. They are a very forward generation, children in whom is no imunah, who is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not an Elohim. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities or their vain things. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. And I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. So at the most I said, I'm going to get you back. I'm going to show you what it feels like. So while you're out here hating other nations that seem to be blessed, the most high call us to hate other nations that seem to be blessed. The most high place the other nation in a state of being blessed in a state of having better homes, more money. <laughs> Their children are going to be in private schools. Your children still got to go learn this broken English language while their children are getting a better education. That's a punishment, Mr. McCaw. See, we want to hate somebody, but the most I said, my people didn't love me. So, I, so, so since they provoked me to jealousy with that which was not a God, I'm going to provoke them to jealousy with that which is not a people which was not a people under me. You are my children. You are my children. And so now you made me jealous. Now you've made me upset with you. You will now be the lowest of all nations in the earth when you were supposed to be what? Above all nations because you were supposed to be in my image and you were supposed to esteem my name. And when people seen you, they should have seen me. But since you have defiled my name, even though his name could never be defiled, but your mannerisms while you proclaiming my name and you bringing my name to naught, you will be brought low. You will be punished. So since you got fat in your blessings, I will strip you of your blessings and I will now fulfill what I told you already in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. I will now curse you if you turn away from me. That's the word of Elohim. So they moved him to jealousy and then he told what he would do. I will heap missions upon them. I will spend my arrows on them. So he's giving you all the different types of destruction that he would give to you in his anger. All right? Let's drop that. Let's move to Nahum 1, chapter 1. Come knock y'all. And Adon Uziel, give me numbers 25. Come y'all. Let's go to Nahum 1, 2 through 7. Elohim is jealous, and y'all revenges. Y'all revenges, and is furious. Y'all will take vengeance on his adversaries, and he reserves wrath for his enemies. Pause, read that again. Elohim is jealous, mm -hmm. and y'all revenge, and y'all revenges. Y'all revenges and is furious. Y'all will take vengeance on his adversaries, and he reserves wrath for his enemies. So it says again here what? Elohim is jealous. So we've seen it said Elohim whose name is jealous is a jealous Elohim. The Elohim that said, make no graven image, do not bow down to them, for I, Yahweh Elohim, am a jealous God. 
So he's letting you know, I'm letting you know my image. And if anyone is telling you you can do this some other way, you will find out at some point that you've upset me. So Elohim is jealous and Yah revenging. Yah revenges and is furious. Yah will take vengeance on his adversaries and he reserves wrath for his enemies. So I would much rather be a friend with Yah and an enemy to the world than to be an enemy, uh, than, than to be a friend of a world and an enemy to the Most High. Because at some point when judgment comes, the Most High said he will do what? He will repay his enemies. And if we are not walking in his image after his likeness, when he's ready to bring forth judgment, when he visits the iniquity, he's looking for those who are merciful and who loves him and are keeping his speak out. He's looking for those who are obedient so he can be merciful to those that keep his commandments. And he's also looking for those who hate him so he can bring that judgment on them. Those will be his enemies. Those who are not in his image, he will judge. Verse three, Adon. Yah is slow to anger and great power. So, hallelujah. Love it when a plan comes together. Yah is speaking to us, Mishmachah. What was the two minute warning of Don Kanak, y'all? Uh, being be slow, slow to anger. Don't be slow to speech, Kanak, y'all. <laughs> what was the two minute warning? <laughs> being slow to anger. Being slow to anger, right? So it says, Yah is slow to anger. Though he may be a jealous Elohim, he is not quick in his response. He gives us an opportunity to get things right. So if we're going to be in his image, after his likeness, my brothers and sisters, we're going to also have to be what? Slow to anger. Because in his word, it says he is slow to anger. So if we're in his image, if we're his representatives, if we're in his, after his likeness, then we must be what? Slow to anger. That should be our identity. That should be the characteristics that make up who we are and who we are. We should be known because we are slow to anger because Yahoo is jealous. He's jealous, Cain. Yes. But it also says, Yah is slow to anger. Read on, Aki. And great in power. And will not at all acquit the wicked. Yah have his way in the whirlwind and in the storm. And the clouds are the dust of his feet. Why is that heavy? <laughs> Why is that a powerful verse? Y'all want to know the image of the Most High? The Most High said he would bring destruction with tempests and storms. See, when people think of all these storms going on and stuff and people getting destroyed and the Most High is tearing up stuff with all types of floods and, and thunderstorms, hurricanes, tsunamis, even though he would not completely destroy the world with a flood anymore, he didn't say he would still chastise a little bit with them storms. He has Malachim that controls the winds, the rain, the hail, the snow. And when he gives them a command, when he gets angry, this is how he works. This is how he brings his judgment. So let me go back. Yah is slow to anger and great in power and will not acquit. You're not, I'm not going to let go of your wickedness. If you're in that, when judgment comes, you're going to have to own that. Yah have his way in the whirlwind and in the storm and the clouds are the dust of his feet. When them storms come through, now you see what the old folk used to say. Why the ancients of the elders used to say, turn that TV off when God talking. Huh? You see what they said that? Give some respect. The most high talking. Now when the thunderstorm going on, we playing video game. Up loud in a headset, ain't even concerned with the light that can strike the house. You can lose neutral to your home for those that know electricity and fry every circuit that's in the house. And if you had on some earphones while the storm is going on, you're gonna be zapping your ears. When they went to the mountain to receive the commandments of the Most High, what was going on? Thunderings and lightnings and the people feared the Most High. So though our forefathers, a Koti Gadol, a Koti Miss Willeen, I'm gonna I'm I'm throw this one out here for Miss Willeen for a second. Though our forefathers at the time did not yet receive the law at the mount, they received that ruach of fear at that mount. So the most high spoke to them through the ruach first. Oh my goodness. This is the power of the almighty. That thunder and lightning. Listen, Moshe. Listen, Moses. We don't need to hear no more words from the most high. 
You go up and you get them words and you bring them back to us. The forefathers understood that the most high, who was the almighty, the all powerful, when them thunders and lightnings were on that mount, they were scared, they shut down. We need to get back to culture and understand that sometimes when the most high said, y'all need to take a rest, when them storms come, it's time for us to rest also while the most high do work because he's in the whirlwinds, he's in the storm. Or he's authorized, should I say, the storm and his malachim are doing his bidding. Pick up in verse four, Don. He rebuke of the sea and making it dry and dry from all the rivers. But Sean language in Carmel and the flower of Lebanon language. The mountains quake at him and the hills melt and the earth is burned at his presence. Yea, the world and all that dwell therein. Who can stand before his indignation? And who can abide in his fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire, and the rocks are thrown down by him. Yah is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. So I want us to hear all this, right? And y'all can read the rest of Nahum at your own reading time. So it's letting us know that Yah is slow to anger, but it's also saying that Yah, who is jealous, he will take his wrath out on his adversaries, on his enemies, those that do not submit to his will and his way. He would do it with the whirlwinds. He can create a famine. Yah is the Almighty that says, who can stand or who can stop the indignation of Yah when he's angry? <clears throat> so point being, he don't go to anger first. He's slow to anger. So then what should we be? Slow to anger. Anger should not be our first thing. But when we have been humble, right. obedient, and slow to anger, and when y'all say y'all should be angry at what's going on in this earth, we should look like him in the anger towards sin. Y'all is Elohim, Shika. Y'all is good and stronghold in the day of trouble and know of them that trust in him. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the Most High will judge his enemies, but he's also going to be a place of what? Safety unto those who love him. He'll be a stronghold. Does that tie in with Adon Kanakya's two-minute warning in any way? Did Adon Kanakya talk about Gates being up, a man that can control his Ruach, a man that can control his spirit? And he went into explaining about the gates, a gate of walls they keep people inside and keep them safe and it's the barrier to keep that which is wicked out. So a man that can control his ruach is a man that's what? Sealed and protected. And he have strong wall of defense. But it says a man that can't control his spirit, a man that's full of anger, is as a man that's going to lose the city. Because the wall going to come tumbling down. There is no safety in your anger because you're not reasoning right. You're not thinking from a set apart mindset. You allow your anger, your anger, to take you away from the, the most high. Take you away from the safety. But when the most high say be slow to anger, if we're keeping that command, if we're keeping all the other commands, when he comes through judgment on his adversaries and he said, who can stand amongst the indignation? If you're in righteous, you ain't got to worry about who can because we know no one can stand, withstand the indignation of the most high. However, if you love him and he loves you, he will protect you while he's doing the destroying of those who hate him. Let's drop that Adon, hallelujah. Numbers 25, Adon Uziel, by me by 25, and Kanaki, I'm gonna let you go to Ezekiel 8. Numbers 25, Adon Uziel, and let's start about verse, start at verse one just to get a little bit of it. Bumi Bar, commonly called Numbers chapter 25, starting at verse one. And Yisrael abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their mighty ones. And the people did eat and bowed down to their mighty ones. So let's pause and it for a second. Let's pause it for a second. So we see here that Israel is now committing whoredom with the daughters of Moab. We've already read in Deborim or Deuteronomy that we are not to actually, uh, actually Deuteronomy as well as the Shemot, we don't create any images. We don't bow before any images. We've also read how the Most High did not want us giving our sons and our daughters 
in unions because they would go horn after their gods. That's Torah. And he's already prophesied in Torah what would happen if we did not guard and protect ourselves and if we did not guard and protect our children. He said they will be given into the, uh, to the other nation. They go horn after their gods. This here is a time period when there was one who wanted to overthrow Israel. And he sought the, the wizard, I'm going to call him. He wanted him to put a curse on Israel, which he refused to put a curse on Israel. But what he did give them was advice on how to overthrow Israel. He said, you know what them Israelites like? Even though the Most High tell them they ain't supposed to mess with these strange women, they ain't supposed to be in fornication. They're not supposed to fornicate. They're not supposed to be in adultery and all that kind of stuff. Them brothers love some women. So what you do is you send your pretty Moabite women over there to entice them. And I'm sorry, Mr. Bacall. I'm sorry, but I have to do this because we are visual people. And give them a little bit so they can start being drawn to the women and they're going to keep wanting these women. Then you tell the women that, look, I can't be with you anymore unless you worship our gods. So what did the little wicked Israelite men do? Fornicated with these women, started going after these women, and they liked these women so much, Israelite men. Listen, they love these strange women so much that they caused them to bow before another god. That was the trick of the adversary to take the Israelite man from the Yah mindset, the set apart mindset, to the corrupt Shatan mindset. So now what we are reading here, they're sitting there in Shittim, and they call the people into the sacrifice of their gods, and the people did eat and bow down to their god. Who did? Israel. First three of them. Verse three. And Yisrael joined himself unto Baal Peor, and the anger of Yahuwah was kindled against Yisrael. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, take all the heads of the people and hang them up before Yahuwah against the sun, that the fierce anger of Yahuwah may be turned away from Yisrael. So it said Israel joined themselves. Israel joined in with the people. They are bowing before false gods. What do we read in the Torah? Do not bow to them. Do not make them. Do not create them. And when you go into a place where someone inhabits that I've driven out from before you, do not eat their custom, break it down, tear it down. But what has Israel done? Because of the lust of women, they are now bowing down to false gods because what? They prefer women over the most high. They preferred women over the most high. My sisters, I'm in no way knocking y'all. I'm just letting y'all see and know that apparently y'all are a valuable creation because men will lose their soul behind a woman. But according to a Hebrew woman that's trained, it said a mind that is well trained, whew, it's a barakah blessing. So if a daughter is a daughter of the Most High, and she's given to a man, she will add to his house. She will build his house. She will secure his house because she'll be a true help me. But if you get a woman that's not in Yahweh, and a woman is not even considering serving the most high, that woman's gonna tear down your house. And as me and Maury had it, y'all was having us a, a good time last night at the Shabbat service. Solomon had many wives. About 700 of them, <laughs> about 700 of them made him do what? The most wise king that there was, when he had those strange wives, he also himself bow before them, well, he didn't necessarily bow before them, but he allowed them to bring images and idols that he knew they were not supposed to have. But here where we are, according to the text, Israel would now bow and they join themselves unto a false god, as it says in Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. Do not join to them, but you've joined yourself unto Baal Peor. You are bowing before the false one. And y'all said unto Moses, take all the who, the rosh, the chief, the heads of the people, and do what? Hang them up before Yah against the sun, that the fierce anger of Yah may be turned away from Israel. We covered this last night in Torah study. If you see someone bringing their children to Moloch, it's your duty to do what? Kill that nonsense. So now Torah just backing itself up even more. It says, to Moses, you get the heads of Israel. They the ones that's allowed to go on. It's the leadership. 
The leaders in sin, so if the leaders doing it and they're enjoying it, the people are going to bow also. So we're going to make an example starting where? With the leadership. Leadership, listen, he's going to start with the leadership. Go get the Rosh. Go get the heads of Israel that are leading my people astray and hang them up before that sun go down for my fierce anger. Read on to verse 5, Adon. Verse 5. That the fierce anger of Yah may be turned from, because no one can stop it unless you do what the most I command you to do. So if you want the fierce anger to be turned away from Israel, go get them leaders and hang them up here so that I can deal with them before the people. Now I continue to read, Aki. Verse 5. Verse 5. And Moshe said unto the judges of Israel, Slay ye every one his men that were joined until Baal Peor. And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Midianite woman in the sight of Moshe and in the sight of all the assembly of the children of Israel who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. And when Peniach, the son of Eleazar, the son of Eharon, the priest, saw it, he rose up from among the assembly and took a javelin in his hand. And he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. So the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. Hallelujah. Those... Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So remember, we said we're in Yah's image, right? So we must be slow to anger. But we ought to have to pray and ask the most high, when is that anger in us being after your own heart? When is that anger in us or that jealousy in us, your ruach? making us feel like that. The Most High always gives us visuals. As Maury Hanny, I was discussing with me, we got to not only know the who he was chastising, but the why. So we would know what it looked like in our time. So Phineas, the son of Eleazar, seen something take place. What did he see take place? After Moses was instructed, to kill these men that brought this sin up in here. Now y'all sitting before the congregation, you and the congregation are now sitting here crying out to the Most High. And you still gonna have a wicked Israelite that's gonna still come over here with a strange woman. Bring it over right before the congregation, no care, no concern, and you're gonna, gonna come up in here like it's okay. Hope y'all hear this. Because what does it look like today sometime when brothers have to say certain things? A strange woman is a strange woman. And if you are representing the Most High supposedly, and you're doing strange things with a strange woman, you're misrepresenting the Most High. But when certain mores start calling people out, because people do not understand the word of the Most High and the image of the jealousy of the Most High and how the anger of the Most High is executed by the men of the Most High, Sometimes the judges are the most are the ones that are persecuted. Because of the mindset, they don't understand the set apart mindset. You mean to tell me that the most high's anger was going to destroy Israel? So he said, to turn my anger away from Israel, bring them elders and hang them up. Bring the chiefs. Hang them up. And kill all the men that would participate in this nonsense so everybody else would be scared to do this nonsense. Get it up out of Israel. And then you're going to have somebody just walk up in there with a Midianite woman after all this shit took place. So was Phineas at that time, Pinkas at that time, was he slow to anger? Was he slow to anger? No, he was Yah angry. <laughs> he was Yah angry. So we need to understand there's a time to be slow to anger and there's a time to respond. And there's a time to act. But you have to know what you're looking at. You have to know what you're judging before you judge. And if you know it's something against the Most High and the Most High puts that Ruach on you of that anger of Yah on you, that's what it looks like. You mean to tell me Yah was going to destroy us and he told us how to turn the anger off of us and you still going to come up here with this nonsense? That, mm. And he thrust him and the woman through and put them both to death. And for that, his name was esteemed highly in Yah. Highly in Yah. So Pinkas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest. So this is the son of a priest. 
saw it. He rose up from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand, and he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through the man of Israel and the woman through her belly, so the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. And those that died in the plague were 24,000. The most high killed 24,000 wicked men. 24,000. Y'all see how quick wickedness multiplies? 24,000? So Pinkas did what? He went and he slew them because he was doing what? Turning the wrath of the most away from Israel. The same way Yehuda the Hammer, commonly called Judah Maccabee did. When they were telling people not to circumcise their children, what did Judah Maccabee do? He went through the land and was circumcised the people. He was putting in that work. He had the salvation of Yah. He had the mindset of the heart after Yah, the ruach of Yah, and the jealousy of the anger of Yah within him, reestablishing the way of the Most High. So we have to start understanding what it looks like sometimes when men and women of the Most High stand on truth and do not allow sin amongst them. It is a responsibility and a duty. Did y'all hear one of our sisters on the line today? She said, y'all hear me say this thing commonly, but the Most High speaking to me today. She ain't getting up upset with a two-minute warning. She still understands I have something I have to work on. But she wants to change as we all want to change. This walk and this Torah is supposed to be a heart transplant. If you're coming to receive, you're coming to receive for the sake of what? Transformation and to be renewed in your mind. If you want to stay the same, this ain't the place for you. It's for a renewal of the mind, to get an understanding, not to get upset, not to want to remain the same, not to be fashioned as your old self, but to be renewed. That's the purpose of this word, because what we can see here is that if the leadership is not doing what the leadership is supposed to do, this type of behavior will multiply. There is a duty, and we need to start understanding our duties. We need to start understanding how we worship and praise the most high in all aspects of our worship. It said that a priest was supposed to make, different, make known the difference between clean and unclean. And not allow it into the synagogue, not allow it into the Mishkan, into the sanctuary, into the Knesset. Not that you hate people, but you love the Most High and you love the individuals. Because though we may show up, if we're showing up wrong, the Most High anger may bring judgment upon us. And so we see here that Pinchas reacted to keep the wrath of Yah turned away from Israel. Hallelujah. Torah don't Uziel. Shabbat Shalom. I know you got to go to the next lesson. Hanak, y'all, let's go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 8. Ezekiel, chapter 8. And start at verse 1. Yekizakel or Ezekiel, chapter 8. We start with verse 1. And it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I sat in my house, and the elders of Judah sat before me, that the hand of Adonai was upon me. Okay, so I'll point like one thing real quick tonight. Yeah, don't meet your back. I'm coming right back to you. So it says, it came to pass in the sixth year, we sent in his house, the elders of Israel, the word of the elders is Zakane, or Zakanim, all right? Just remember that. Continue to read. <clears throat> then I beheld, and lo, a likeness as the appearance of fire. And the appearance of his loins even down with fire. And from his loins even upward, as the appearance of brightness as the color of amber. And he put forth the form of his hand and took me by a lock of my head. And the spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven. And brought me in the visions of Elohim to Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate that looked toward the north. So where is he at now? He's in the what? He's in the Ruach. He's seeing things. He's seeing the imagery in the what? In the Ruach. He's being lifted up in the spirit in the Ruach. And he put forth the form of a hand and took me by a lot of my head. And the Ruach lifted me up between the arrest and the Shemayim and brought me in the visions 
of Elohim to Jerusalem. Continue to read, Aki. Where was the seat of the image of jealousy? Go back, go back to uh, verse three, right after Jerusalem. To the door of the inner gate that looked toward the north. Where was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provoked the jealousy? Ho, ho, ho. So what was there? What was there? So our lesson has been this whole time for, 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 for uh, a past few weeks now, the image of Elohim and the likeness of Elohim. So now he's taken up by the Ruach and he's seeing in the visions of Elohim and he's seeing what? In the visions of Elohim to Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate. This is at Jerusalem, the door of the inner gate that looked toward the north where he was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provoked to jealousy. What did he see there? He's seeing the image of jealousy that provoked to jealousy. So the Most High said, his name is jealous. He is a jealous Elohim. You do not make any graven image. You do not make any idol. You do not bow down to them nor serve them. And if you come into the place where I give you to inhabit and I cleared out your way, you tear down. So now in Jerusalem, what is there? He said, they provoke him to jealousy with that which is not a God. So now the image of jealousy is where? In Jerusalem. Why is this a visual I want you to see? Because the image of jealousy is in most church houses. Most places that call themselves places of God and places of worship, they have the images of jealousy in them, before them, on top of them. And we need to visually see the word of the most high spiritually. So the image of jealousy was there. Now I'm shifting from the most high jealousy to the image of jealousy, which causes jealousy. The very thing that makes him jealous, as I stated before, is false images and false idols which makes him burn with fire when we do the very thing he tells us not to do. So we should not create them, we should not have them, we should not bow before them, we need to tear them down. Physically, spiritually, and mentally. Continue to read, Kanak, y'all. Verse four. And behold, the glory of the Elim of Israel was there, according to the vision that I saw in the plain. And behold, the esteem of Elohim of Israel was there, according to the vision that I saw in the plain. Read. Then said he unto me, son of man, lift up your eyes now, the way toward the north. So I lifted up my eyes the way toward the north, and behold, northward at the gate of the altar of this image of jealousy in the entry. He said, furthermore unto me, son of man, see as you what they do even the great abominations that the house of Israel committed here. So let me give you another perspective real quick. There's some that believe that the image of jealousy is an image that's set up. And there's some that believe that the image of jealousy was the most high standing there present in his jealous form, explaining to him what he wanted to deal with. All right, so it depends on whose perspective you want to take that from, right? But the point is, he says, the image of jealousy was there, but he also knew the presence of the most high, the spirit of the most high was there, right? Read the last verse again real quick or not. Verse six, he said, furthermore unto me, son of man, see as you what they do. Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committed here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary. But turn you yet again, and you shall see greater abominations. And he brought me to the door of the court. And when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Then said he unto me, son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, go in. And behold, the wicked abominations that they do here. So I went in and saw. And behold, every form of creeping things and abominable beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. Pause it for a second. So the most I told him, man, just look. I want you to look at the abominations that they're doing in Israel right now. I want you to look at the abomination they're doing in my house. Look, I want you to go tear the portion of the wall. I want you to go look through the wall and just peep in. 
Just look in. What the Most High is doing is showing them what visitation looks like. This is how I look at y'all. This is how I see. When I come to look at what y'all are doing, this is what I'm seeing. I'm giving you a part of my vision. And why my anger is starting to boil, why my jealousy is being provoked and how it's being provoked and the why and the wrath I'm about to bring upon this place. Look at what they're doing. Look at what they have up in here. Every abominable creeping thing, all these abominations, all these idols. Continue to read, Aki. In the house of Israel, portrayed upon the wall round about. So all around the walls, they got all these images and the idols. Oh, this St. Peter, this St. Now, let me stop. Let me, let me, I'm, I'm not going to make it personal. Let's see, keep going, Aki. Verse 11. And there stood there before them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel. And in the midst of them stood Jehazaniah. So Hebrew students, there stood before them 70 men of the ancients. That same word for ancients is the same word that was used for Zakain or Elder Up. So there stood there who? Man, I'm telling you, Rosh, leadership and elders. We got to see that when judgment comes, who the most high going to start with a lot of times. So we got to make sure we are doing our responsibility and our duty. We have to make sure. Why? Because already we've seen that he's put some elders together that had these women coming up in there. Now what we're seeing here is that the elders, read that again, Kanaki, the ancients, go back to the ancients. And there stood before them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel. And in the midst of them stood Jehazaniah, the son of Shaphat, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. And he then said he unto me, son of man, have you seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the chambers of his imagery. For they say, Yah see if us not, Yah have forsaken the earth. Ho, 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 ho. So now he's looking in, you've seen all these items, all this imagery, all this wickedness in there. Now if you see that, he's now telling them, now look, look at the ancients, look at the elders, 70 of them. Look at what they're doing. Then he said unto me, son of man, thou hast seen the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark every man in, in the chambers of his imagery. For they say, Yah see of us not, Yah have forsaken the earth. They're saying, Yah don't see us. Yah don't see what we're doing. Who's doing the wickedness? The elders. The elders are 70 of the elders are doing wickedness in the dark, saying, Yah don't see us. Y'all don't see us, so we can do these things. But what were they doing? I'm going back to uh, back to verse 11. And there stood before them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel, and in the midst of them stood uh, Jezaniah, uh, the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. So then there were all these incense and things, trying to be so-called holy in their own way. Then said he unto me, son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do? In the dark, every man in the chambers of his imagery, for they say, Yah see of us not, Yah have forsaken the earth. They're here worshiping the most high another way. And what I want to highlight is the fact of, uh, of the name of one of the priests that's here. Jezaniah, right? His name is Yah hears or ear of Yah. Azonia. The word azan or azon for ear, which is to hear or to listen, or the actual ear itself, ear of Yah, a herd of Yah. So these are people that proclaim or have the what? Name of Yah in their name. That are doing what? Burning incense, got idols in their chambers, introducing, as we read earlier, these new gods to Israel. Want to do your chakras, want to do your voodoo, your Hinduism, want to try to justify it because you want to say that the ancients did things. I got something about the ancients right here. These are ancient Israelites because ancient Israelites were in certain cities, certain countries, and they did certain things does not mean it's of Yah. Remember, ancient Israelites are the reason why we're in captivity. 
So just because you can prove that it was in Africa and they did this, or it didn't start here, it didn't start with Hinduism first, it's Hinduism. I'm not going to tell people to get your chakras aligned. I'm going to tell you to get alignment with Torah and get alignment with the Ruach of the Most High. That's the word of Yah for the children of Yah. That's the way our forefathers taught it. That's the way we should teach it. Anything else is this new age and these new gods and this false worship that strange women might introduce you to. Thirteen, can I count? He said also unto me, turn you yet again, and you shall see greater abominations that they do. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of Yah's house, which was toward, toward the north, and behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. So, so now he says, so keep looking. Keep looking, keep watching what y'all are doing. This is the worship. Everybody's doing their own form of worship. The elders are in their dark chambers, got all these incense, got all this imagery, got all these false gods around, but they still spiritual. They still have my name in their name. They still consider themselves a priest. A priest to who though? Now look, just keep looking. There's more abominations. You have then brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's or Yah's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there set women weeping to Tammuz. Tammuz, the word Tammuz means sprout of life. It is a Sumerian a deity of food, of vegetation, or Phoenician god. Y'all pause for one second. Let me give you just a little pause, one second. Uh, let me get something real quick. Uh, so I'm reading something here. It says, weeping for Tammuz was, uh, was a Sumerian deity and part of a dying and rising god mythology connected to fertility rituals. During the dry, unproductive season, Tammuz inhabited the underworld. Rituals of mourning for Tammuz, the apparent scene described here, was intended to restore Tammuz to life and to restore the land's fertility. So now they bring in the worship of Tammuz and the practice of, of these heathen customs to Israel. So instead of the women crying out to the Most High, y'all see now, there's nothing new under the sun. When you have more race teaching this nonsense, there's an origin already for this stuff. There's nothing new under the sun. There was wicked Israelites then, there's wicked Israelites now. We serve the one Elohim whose name is Yah, the way he commands us to. We don't bow to no goddess of fertility or no god of fertility. We don't worship Tammuz, but the women were bowing to Tammuz. Follow where you had continue to read, Aki. Y'all give me just a little bit more. I'm going to be done, done here shortly. Just give me a few more moments. Read, can I yeah, call it for you and continue to read? Verse 16. And he brought me into the inner court of Yah's house. And behold, at the door of the temple of Yah, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of Yah and their faces toward the east. And they worshiped the sun toward the oh, east. Oh, oh, oh. So he said, just keep watching. It's going to get greater. And as we cover it, saying how, how the sin multiplied in the earth way back in Parashit, what do we see here? It's multiplying. They're getting more and more wicked. Everybody just worshiping how they want to worship, but no one is doing it my way. And I mean no offense to anyone when I say this. The religion of Christianity does not align with the word of the Most High. We're not judging anyone to consider themselves a Christian, but the religion itself, a lot of it takes you away from the Most High. And I have to say that clearly because we're in modern times now. If your religion is telling you that the laws of the Most High is done away with, that's the image of jealousy. That's the image of an idol. If your word is telling you, you can walk in disobedience, because we're reading through the Torah and the Tanakh, we read through the word of the Most High, what it looks like. I'm not judging. I'm just being informative according to the word of the Most High. We should not have any religions. We're supposed to have obedience to the word of God, whose name is Yah. 
So what his words say we shall do and not what a religion tells us to do. Not Judaism, not Hinduism, not Christianity. We don't follow religion. We follow the word of the most high, right? And why is that important? Because these different religions have already had an origin someplace. We got women bowing to Talmuds. When you do Easter, that's Astro, a goddess of fertility. Tammuz is a male deity of fertility also. A Sumerian god. Can anybody tell me anything you know about Sumeria? Pause on it for a moment. Pause on it. There's some, some origin of some things going on in Sumeria. There's some things in Mesopotamia. Do we know anything about Mesopotamia? Have we heard anything about Ur the Chaldees? Have we heard where our forefathers originated from and traveled from and traveled through? Abraham left this mess. So though there may be Hebrews that was doing this mess, Abraham left them Hebrews behind and went to Yah. So don't get caught up in all this fancy worship that people want to do and all these new traditions and new customs and sounding deep and sounding smart and stuttering through some information they don't really understand themselves. We need to understand this word of Elohim. So back to the last verse. Paul, read that last verse again, Kanaki. Because I want us to see this here. He said, he said it's going to get greater. Now read the last verse again. Verse 16. And he brought me into the inner court of Yah's house. And behold, at the door of the temple of Yah, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of Yah. So now they back to turn to the temple of the Most High. And where are they facing Kanaki? And their faces toward the east. And they worship the sun toward the east. And they worship the what? They worship the Shemash or the Shemesh, which is also a Sumerian or a religion that's in Mesopotamia, uh, of, of the god Shemash, which is the god of the sun, the sun god. So they turn their backs on the Most High and they're now facing to the sun and they're worshiping the sun. Has anyone ever understood why there are steeples on a church? Have anyone understood why they have this certain type of glass? And these windows with all these different idols on these windows so it can shine through on you? Have anybody ever thought about why they do sunrise service? See, we have to know the language. We have to know the traditions. We have to know the customs. We have to know the origins. And though we may think something is innocent, it is not. Though it may seem like people are nice, it is not nice to the most high. The most I hate this stuff. This stuff is already written in Ezekiel. Sun worship. The religion is based on sun worship. You're not worshiping the most high. And you're putting the, the so-called images up. And the most high say, take them down. It's all in reference to Tammuz, to Mithra, to all types of false gods. The most high is telling Ezekiel, which is a prophet. See how much wicked it's going to be and how much it's going to grow and grow and grow. It's no limit to how wicked it's going to be. Continue to read, Kanaki. Verse 17. Then he said unto me, Have you seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore will I also deal in fury. Mine eyes should not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cried in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. He said, do you see the, the, these abominations that Israel commit? This is a light thing that Mr. Committee is abomination. Are they even considering what they're doing? Are they thinking about me? Did I remember what I said to Nahum, how I would not acquit the wicked of their sins? So you know what I'm about to do here because of all these abominations and they've not considered me. They provoke me once again to anger by the image of jealousy, by the false image. So they provoke me. So now what is the most high going to do? He said he would do what? He would bring judgment to his enemies. Who is his enemies? These are not Gentile nations. These are not the other nations. This is Yisrael, Yasha, Allah, Israel, whichever dialect you may be familiar with. So while making our boast to being the Israelites, 
That's your heritage, yeah. <laughs> but you have to grow and mature and you have to earn your inheritance. Hallelujah, I love it when a plan comes together. Now we are about to get to the close. We're gonna move forward to chapter nine. So they did provoke him to anger. Therefore, I will also deal in fury. Mine I shall not spare. Listen, y'all, the most I say he will not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet I will not hear them. Why? Because once again, they have provoked me to jealousy and they've waxed fat. They got to the point where they didn't need me anymore. So I'm going to judge them. But in close, Ezekiel chapter nine, start with verse one, I keep. He cried also in my ears with a loud voice saying, cause them to have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lies toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, with the writer's inkhorn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. And glory of the Elim of Israel was going up from the cherub, whereupon he was to the threshold of the house, to the, to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's ink horn by his side. And Yah said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of, of the men that sigh and cry, for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Oh, 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 oh. So now I said, he cried also in my ears with a loud voice saying, cause them that have charge over the city to draw near even every man with a destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lied toward the north and every man a sort of weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen with a writer's ink horn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar and the esteem of Elohim of Israel or the God of Israel was going up from the cherub whereupon he was to the threshold of the house and he called to the man clothed with linen which had the writer's ink horn by his side. I want you to read verse four for me again. Can I count? I want y'all to hear what this man clothed in linen was uh, sanctioned or given the order to do. Revert for he. And Yah said unto him, Go through the midst of the city. Go through, through the, the middle, middle of the city. Through the midst of Jerusalem. Through the middle of Jerusalem. And set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. To do what? Go through the middle of the city. Go through the middle of Jerusalem. Take the ink on it. I want you to put a mark. Y'all remember this, right? We've taught on about the mark of Yah and the mark of the beast. Y'all telling Ezekiel, listen, I'm going to have someone mark certain individuals. Who's being marked? The people that are doing what? Crying. Weeping. For what? For the abominations that's taking place. Before I go any further, when someone just unmute your mic and tell me what you understand from that, who are the people that's weeping? For the abominations, who are those? Yah's people. So I heard Yah's people. Them. What was the second one? Those that love him and serve him, and keeping his commandments. Those that love him and serve him. Those that are sitting back, slow to anger, slow to wrath, and you're like you're about to cry now because you see how this world is changing before you. How wicked is it? No one is considering the Most High. Seventy of our elders are wicked. The women are weeping it for Tamu. They're worshiping the sun. Sun worship. Somebody might came and muted. Okay, so they're worshiping the sun. They have all these idols. They're burning incense. They're doing all this witchcraft stuff. So people are seeing us, ooh, the righteous, the ones that love the Most High, that keep his commandments. They're crying out, they're war out, they're like, man, I'm tired of seeing this foolishness. 
My daughter can't even go into a, a girl's bathroom safe no more because y'all want to say a little boy, if you want to say he's a little girl, you go in there. And if she end up right, I might have to, first of all, most of all, I never put any of us in that position. We might have to peacock somebody. Our women can't even go into the restroom safe. Why? Because the world now says a man can go in a woman's bathroom because he said he's a woman. We can just break the Sabbath. We can say marry this to marry that, but no one will say happy Passover, happy Hanukkah, happy Feast of Unleavened Bread. Let's keep the Day of Atonement. We're going to make our New Year's resolution in the dead of winter. And look at us like, we're strange. These are the people that's crying out, it's us of that generation, of that time. That's like, man, I'm being patient. I'm slow to anger. I'm not trying to be judgmental, but goodness. Look how wicked it is. And so while they're not doing anything, the most I'm like, listen, I got y'all. Y'all just keep doing your work. You stay steadfast. So all you have to do is stay obedient and I'm going to mark you with my mark. Go through the middle of the city. Go through the middle of Jerusalem and mark them as crying out because they see this abomination. If this abomination don't bother you that's going on in the earth right now, there's a problem. If you accept everything that society and the government say, there's a problem with that. If you want to allow that stuff into your church because of their rules, there's a problem with that. There is a problem with that. We're supposed to despise what the most high despise, hate what the most high hate. The most high says he wants men and women after his own heart, and the time is upon us where the true worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. We don't worship the sun. We don't worship the moon, the stars. We worship the most high. Give me just a few more moments, Tanaka. So it says, mark them on the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Continue to read. Verse five. And to the others, he said, to my adherent, go you after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have you pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. But come not near any man. Children, children, children. I want y'all to hear this. We heard a mother talking about her children today. And she don't want them to get to the world. You are responsible for being obedient too. It's like slay utterly who? Old and young. The most high looking for no excuse about how young you are. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. Pick up after the caller for me, Dawn. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark. And begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men, which were before the house. Ooh. So he says, slay old and young, children, the women, kill everybody, but touch not those who has my mark. Touch not those who walk in my image after my likeness, who proclaim my name, who does not provoke me to jealousy, who does not provoke me to anger, which that which is not a God. Don't touch them, but everybody else, wipe them out. Destroy them. But touch not those whom love me. So now going back to Nahum and a couple of other book, books we just read earlier. It said, who can stand against the indignation of the Most High? No one can. But those who are in righteousness, the Most High, regardless of what city it is, will either get you out or he will protect you in the city when destruction comes, if you are marked with the mark of Yah and not with the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is the law is done away with. The mark of the beast is I don't have to keep Shabbat. The mark of the beast is Easter. The mark of the beast is Christmas. The mark of the beast is Happy New Year. The mark of Yah is remember the seventh day Sabbath to keep it set apart a holy. The mark of Yah is honor thy father and thy mother that your days may be long upon the land which Yah your Elohim giveth thee. The mark of Yah is happy Passover, observe Passover. When in the new year, which is a bit between March and April, during the time of the equinox when the season is actually renewed and when things are beaver be green, that's the new year. Those that are keeping pace like a Passover, those that are atoning for their sins during Yom Kippur, that's the mark of Yah. The 
the mark of the beast is all this other stuff that's being done under the sun that's not written in his word. Mitch, I hope we can clearly see it. I hope we can clearly see it. We're not trying to be offensive here. Only informative. This is the word of Yah for the children of the Most High. And Yah loves you, Mishpaka. He loves us. And I'm going to go on and say it this way. And Yah loves us unconditionally with conditions. Meaning, if you are in a state of sin and you did not know it was sin, you did not know it was false worship, you did not know it was anti-Yah, he winks at us in our ignorance. That is his word. But once you have knowledge of, once you read it, once it has been put out and taught, you must repent and change and be renewed and do not conform to this world. Do not accept. Um, somebody. Do not accept the mark of the beast. But prepare yourself to receive the mark of Yah by walking in obedience to his law, statutes, commandments. And we don't do it because it's bondage. We do it because we love the Most High. We do it because we know the sent one, Yahushua HaMashiach, Yahushua the Messiah, which name means Yah is salvation. Yah sent us a savior in the flesh to show us how to keep these law, statutes, commandments in the spirit of love. Hallelujah. So yes, we do, in case anyone think we don't, we believe in the Messiah. But we don't believe the Messiah came to do away with the law. He came to show us how to walk it out. He came to show us how to talk it out. He came to show us how to live it and how to love it. How to be born into our heritage and how to walk into and increase into and to mature into our inheritance, which is promised by the Most High if we obey and keep his covenant. So he said, do not touch those that are marked with the mark of Elohim. But everybody else, destroy. Call it for you, cannot continue to read. Verse 7. And he said unto them, the no, 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 hold on, hold on. I don't want to miss this. And elders, I'm not trying to come at y'all or come at us. I'm just trying to warn us of our responsibility. <laughs> so when he said, do all this utterly and do all this destroy, but upon whom the mark and begin at my sanctuary, where is he going to start first? He's going to start at his sanctuary, at the house of Elohim first, and to who? Then they begin with the ancient of the Zakanim, the elders, the elders. The Zakanim are the ancient men which were before the house. So you who stand in the house of Yah, before the house of Yah, you will be judged first. We will be judged first. So understand that wearing a title is not all it's cut out to be. We live in an age where everybody wants a title. I want to be known as the bishop, the prophet, the moray, the shalot, the elder, the imam. I want to be known as the prophet of the prophetess. I'm the man of God, the woman of God. I'm the servant of the most high. Whatever accolades that we're putting before our name, understand this. There is a responsibility and a duty and a requirement that comes with a title. And if you have on that title and you call yourself walking in that place and in that space, judgment will start with you or will start with us. So we need to be mindful that we stay straight and narrow and keep this Torah as it is written. Now continue to read, Aki. And he said unto them, defile the house and fill the courts with the slain. Go ye forth. And they went forth and slew in the city. And it came to pass while they were slaying them and I was left that I fell upon my face and cried and said, ah, Adnel Yahweh. Will you destroy all the residue of Israel in your pouring out of your fury upon Jerusalem? Then, he, then said he unto me, the iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great, and the land is full of blood, and the city full of perverseness. For they say, Yah has forsaken the earth, and Yah seeth not. And as for me also, mine eyes should not spare, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense their way upon their head. And behold, the man clothed with linen, which had the ink horn by his side, reported the matter, saying, I have done as you have commanded. 
So he's saying, kill, kill up everything except for those that have the mark. Bring their bodies and throw them up in here. <laughs> and so, but here's what we should feel, Mr. Makai. Now your kids are killer. Ezekiel did what? He fell on his face and started crying because he's seeing into the future. He's seeing into the vision of the Most High, the destruction of his people because of disobedience. He's seeing how false religion, false worship has crept in to lead people away from the Most High. They think they're praying to God. They think they're praying to the Most High, and they're not. And he's seeing that there's going to be a day when the destruction of the Most High will come. And the Most High said, I would not spare them. He said, will you destroy all Israel? He said, the iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is great. And I will repay them for their sin. Those that are marked will be delivered. But those that are marked with the mark of the beast, they will die. So we have been taught about this grace that we're under. And we're living in the sin of homosexuality, adultery, fornication, thieves, murderers, slanderers, lasciviousness. Whatever sin there is under the sun, we're not picking and choosing any of it. Idolatry, if that's who we are when judgment time comes, then we are marked with the mark of the beast and we will be destroyed. In the book of Matthews, and this is my close, Matthews 1, can I y'all get this? I'm going to stay here for one second, but you go ahead and go to Matthew chapter 1. And I want you to see how gruesome this sounds so that we can really understand and embrace the Messiah. He said, the iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great, and the land is full of blood and the city full of perverseness. For they say, Yah have forsaken the earth and, I, and, and Yah see of not. And as for me also, mine I shall not spare, neither will I have pity, but I will, will re, re, uh, repay. And behold, the man clothed with linen, which had the ink on by his side, reported the matter saying, I have done all thou hast commanded me. So what he say, listen, you can cry you want to Ezekiel. All you better do is go warn these people because when that day come, I will not have pity. I will not spare children. Listen, I will kill little children also. Parents, listen, if you ain't training your child up in the way it should go, your children will be killed also because you taught them to be in sin. He said, I'm going to do this destruction. And then the man that was dressed in white linen came back and said, Abba, I'm done. I done marked everybody that's, that's been marked. So again, the mark of the beast, while everybody running around here worrying about a chip and this, that, and that, it's the way you worship the most high. It's whose commandments you keep, along with some physical things, yes. And my aunt Eliezer, I want to get back to you on a discussion we were supposed to have a while ago. But yes, there are some physical things also, but the first thing we need to be concerned with is the spiritual. How you worship, when you worship, the commandments you keep, determines who you're serving and what image you're representing, who you're like. Lawlessness is like Satan, and keeping the Torah is being like Yah in his image and after his likeness. And if you are marked with lawlessness and the mark of the beast, destruction will come. But if you are marked with the mark of Yah, Yah said he will keep you safe. You will have your salvation. Hallelujah. Now in close, Matthews 1, 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and he shall call his name Yahusha, for he shall save his people from their sins. That's the close. Why is the Mashiach important to us? Because it has already been said, it has already been asked, who can stop the indignation of the Most High? <laughs> the Most High has already said, judgment is coming. But it says, she should bring forth a son, and you should call his name Yahusha or Yahoshua, Yahshua, for those who may understand that dialect, which means Yah is salvation. Yah does not desire to destroy us, but the Messiah came to show us how to serve the Most High properly. The Messiah said, think not that I come to destroy the law of the prophets. I did not come to destroy, I come to fulfill. Ezekiel is the prophet, and the first five books of the Bible is the law. Think not that I come to do away with the laws that are written, 
and don't think I come to do away with the prophets that are telling y'all what's going to happen. I come to fulfill. And the brother of the man in white linen that Martha said it is done when the destruction of the Most High comes, you're going to be destroyed. But the Messiah was sent to show us how to be upright and to save us from sin. So a lot of people that may not want to accept him, that's everyone's personal cho choice and decision. I'm not here to try to make anyone believe a certain way. But the reason why he didn't do like Judah Maccabee, because Israel has had many saviors in the earth already that kept delivering Israel from the hands of kings and rulers, from oppression, and then what did Israel always do? Whack fat and turn against Yah. What Messiah came to do was first get our minds right, for our minds to get renewed, to tell us what's needed for salvation, to be prepared for the true judgment and the final judgment of the Most High, that we may be saved. Here's how you must live your life, in spirit and in truth. Brothers and sisters, the day and the time is upon us where the true worshipers must worship the Most High in spirit and in truth. Let us not have the image of jealousy which provoke us to jealousy because Yah, whose name is Yah, his name is also jealous and he is a jealous Elohim who tells us not to make any graven image, don't bow down to them, nor serve them. He's given us laws, statutes, and commandments and he tells us to keep, keep his commandments and the word says, for this is the love of Elohim that we keep his commandments and the love of Elohim unto mankind is he sent the sent one, Yahushua the Messiah, to die for our sins, transgressions, and iniquities. What does that look like? Did it mean that he died and you have life everlasting now? No. He came and he represented truth. He was hated. He was despised. As the word said, we would be for keeping these commandments, but he did not fear the powers to be. He represented the Most High because he was the express image of the Most High. I'm going to die keeping these commandments to show y'all what it looks like. And I'm going to pro proclaim the word of the Most High. I'm going to rebuke elders. I'm going to get the synagogue in order. That's who he was. So whether you was in the church, the Messiah would have came up in there and said, y'all need to get these images down. If you were in the synagogue, a Hebrew assembly, if you were in there making merchandise, he'd come get this nonsense out. And I'm going to tell y'all, a lot of Hebrews are actually worse than the people that's in the churches. Because we get so smart. I mean, Hebrews, we some smart brothers, I'm going to tell you. We get all into learning the language. We learn the grammar rules. And some of us, we start writing. We, we get so sound with the language, we do away with the most high. I've seen it. We get so smart, we start levitating. And we can tell you now how to levitate. We can tell you how to align your chakras. Why you sitting right? And we can tell you what foods to eat that would align your chakras. Yet you got pork on your plate in the most high thing. You ain't supposed to have no pork. See, we get so creative when we get knowledge. And knowledge puff it up. But as a saying says, keep it simple, stupid. Meaning, don't be stupid to try to create another way. Just keep it simple, stupid. Have Yah's mindset, which has already been written and laid out, which shows us what we must do to be saved. Love Yah, keep his commandments. That is the whole duty of man. Selah. And now you the floor to the Zakanin. Wazakono, elders and imams, the floor is now open. I pray that this lesson was well received. And I hope anyone that's new that's listening in can understand what we were delivering and not take offense. We're not in any way judging any church or any religion, but at the same token, we must speak that which is true because we ourselves are not perfect. We ourselves have a lot of cleaning up to do. And we just, as we're revealed through the word of Elohim, we're trying to make the changes to align ourselves with his word and walk in the spirit because the time is upon us for the true worshipers to worship in spirit and in truth, no longer following the lies. Hallelujah. Elders, I yield the floor to you all. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. I just want to say that from the um, cultural study, the two-minute warning, and the main study, it has all been told. Nothing else that I can say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I told a few words, Iman. Hallelujah. Praise Abba. Iman Nukert. Shabbat Shalom. It's been like this, uh, Iman Arthur says, from the culture study to the two minute warning to the study now, it has been told, 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 told. And my my issue is saying you are smoking today. You're smoking. 
And I just thank and praise God for it was smoking. Toda, good word. All praise, honor, esteem to the Most High. May his name be esteemed. All honor be unto the Most High. All honor be unto the Most High. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank y'all for your words of encouragement. Yes, ma'am. You my Shoshana. Praise John D. Um, it is truly an eye opener of what Ezekiel was shown, and it is clear that it is here today. We see it everywhere. We hear it all the time, and it's sad to know that we're doing the same things our ancestors did. But that remnant, praise Yah for the remnant. And the fact that he gives us each day an opportunity to get it right, to repent, to get towards, draw towards him and to walk in him and to live it as he sent his son to show us. So, told, told messages today. I yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I just want to uh, echo Iman Todaya for the opportunity that he gives us each day to repent and to get it right. And that he's showing us the way and he sent someone to show us the way. So hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, Elder Zakanin, the floor is yours. Zakin Eliyahu and Mori Hanaya, I know uh Zakin Yaqua, I'd like to be all known to go first. If y'all have any words. Shabbat Shalom, Miss Bika. Shabbat Shalom, More. Um superb message today. Um I'm being choiceful with my words. So I want to just say that if we could adopt the process that we see through scripture like there is no instantaneous anything of what we just read today it was a process it's telling you to be slow to do something that means that's going to take a process it means you're going to have to take time to process things we see that even from the culture study is that there's a process there's an inheritance that you can have but you got to take the process to, to obtain it so there's a process in all of this. There was a process that Ezekiel saw. He saw ahead of time. But there's a process that he sees going to uh, multiply. So the processes that you're doing are the, the processes that we take will determine whether we end up where we're supposed to end up. Like we have to keep reading Torah, we have to keep renewing our mind. Like you just renew your mind one time and it's it? No, because there's a daily thing that you have to uh, deal with. So you need the constant renewing of the mind. And so it's the process is what I'm just trying to say that was so very relevant in today's message, that there is a process and that you must have certain filters which is be like, yeah, be set apart, yeah. That's actually the filter. <laughs> That's actually the filter. So that we can actually look at the things that you do and filter them through what if what Yah is doing or what Yah has showed us through the examples of our forefathers. Mm-hmm. Bringing that is where I would say that you know more. Mm-hmm. I'm a man that actually you know, carries a stern face. When people see me, they actually believe I'm just mean as can be. It's the, the image of my face. However, it's far from those who know me, but they see it and so they approach differently. However, when anger comes out, it's fierce, it's fierce. But the most high anger is fierce, but when it says for us, and we're trying to learn to obtain, I'm just gonna speak this for those that have the same issue as me. And we're trying to control ourselves. That's the main thing we need to learn. So when we learn how to control ourselves, we should look at these instances that our forefathers had when they had anger issues. Moses on the Mount, as you said, was the first one. Like when the Most High told him, the Most High's anger kindled up, Moshe's mogul, uh, uh, anger was not kindled up. He loved the people. He loved the people. And he he pleaded for the people. He pleaded on behalf of the people 
and the Most High was mad at him. But as soon as he left the Most High and saw it for himself, his anger was, he threw the tablets down. He didn't just throw the tablets down. He went and let the elder have it, his elder brother had it. And then he made all of them, what, what else did he do? He made grind that thing up, the things that y'all did, tear it back down and drink a little of this. But these, why did he do it? It wasn't the people that he hated. It wasn't the people that he was mad at. It was the action of the people that he was mad at, Moray. So just understanding how to control your anger or what anger, righteous anger looks like. Because the word jealous, that word cannot. If you look it up in Hebrew or the Hebrew, it actually says of El only or of Yah only, of God only. So our zealous or our jealousy should only be a reflection of that which is of Yah or from Yah. That's what we're supposed to be jealous for. We're not supposed to be jealous of any materials, any other person, any other thing. We're supposed to be have jealousy or zeal, something that would cause you to anger if, if betrayed. And that's supposed to be those things of Yah, not the things of the world. So with that, I, I just, I'll die, you know, I'll digress in, in you. But great, great Tobe Lesson. I was so excited. Kanaki, you hit it right on the point with the with the controlling of oneself because there's things that that you must do. You can't just say I'm gonna control my anger and not do process or take process to actually do them. Reading is one of those processes. So I was encouraged by the day, and I'm just wanting everybody else to be encouraged as well. Shabbat Shalom. I love you, Ima. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Toda, toda, Zakane for your words. Toda, Aki, toda. Zakane, Eliyahu. Shalom, shalom, and Shabbat shalom to everyone. Um, I want to give a visual, and I believe that everyone can possibly identify with this. Uh, there really isn't anything much that I can uh, say to encourage uh, with words. Those words have been very, very poignant, very powerful, if properly received, adhered, digested, and walked out. One's life can only be improved by it and thereby everyone else's that has contact with that individual be improved. But this is the visual that I wanna give. Everyone on this line, without exception, has to both eat and drink, however frequent it is that one does. What we've heard in these three lessons, messages today, I liken it unto a very, very savory meal that's been served up hot, steaming hot, which is to be enjoyed. But much like a very, very sumptuous meal that has been graciously provided, if there are any leftovers, somehow the following days, that meal is improved. It's as though all the spices and flavors have become homogeneous and somehow it's kicked up a level. Whereas one, when they originally consumed it, man, this was off the hook. It was off the chain, toad, toad. But how could it be possible that the second or third day it's improved? So with this visual, and I'm sure everyone has had possibly that type of an experience, I wanna highly encourage each and every one that hears this message, which is to say those that are on the line presently, as well as those who will listen to this in the future, be it tomorrow, a month, a year, 10 years from now. I want you to listen to this message several times over. 
and I'm going to break a grammatical uh, expression. In so doing, this will become gooder and gooder. And so for you that speak proper English, I know, but you will be indelibly imprinted upon by my soul saying so. I yield. Turn out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got to stop laughing first. I can't fucking speak. Hallelujah. Y'all know I can't always speak really proper. And I, he even had to let us know he's going to break the ground out of <laughs> to, to, to come from his proper speech. But but told us I can't. Told us for your words of wisdom and for the visual that you put in place. Just this week, my Isha made a meal. And I told her that as we was eating, eating off that meal, I said, it's, it's better. You know what I'm saying? It's better today than it was yesterday. It was better each day. And we ate up for about three days. Like you said, it was better and better. So total as I came for that visual, because a lot of times we receive something when we're receiving it, but unless we have a visual, and that's how the most I spoke to Israel in parables. They, he threw something alongside that you can actually understand for you to understand it in the spiritual sense. So total rabaz I came for that. Hallelujah. All praise on esteem be to the most high Yah. Hallelujah. Zakane Yaikwa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, no need to say it uh, again, but but I am. <laughs> powerful, powerful message, Moray. Powerful, powerful message. Um, you know, at, um, I want to say something, and, and I, I really want to be careful, like, <laughs> like uh, Moray Hanayah said. He, he, he's being very selective with his words to be careful with, with, with what his words. And, and <clears throat> when you went into idolatry, you know, um, and how a lot of us came from the Christianity doctrine, believing that it was it was the word, right? And and in essence, what we did, and and you know, like we've turned people into to idols. You know what I mean? We we a lot of us will 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 not believe what the word says because grandma said something different, or grandpa said something different than what the what the word said. Or we listen to pastor, the pastor is saying something contrary to what the word says, but for whatever reason, we, we believe pastor, we bow down to his word or bow down to our family members words. When we can see clearly that it's in contradiction to what the most high said. And in those instances, we are, we are bowing down and serving those people. We've turned those people into idols. And the same way with our own selves too, um, just trying to kind of, um, what I saw from your, from your message, from your lesson, all praises to the most high. And, and ourselves, like we'll read it in the scripture and in our mind we'll say, well, that's not what it means. I, it's, it, I'm gonna do it this way. You know what I mean? And in that instance, we, we, we put ourselves over what the most high said, you know? So we gotta be careful of that. Um, and I'm glad you went that way. And, and the second thing is um, when you went to the image of the most high in our foreheads or the image of, of Hasatan in our foreheads, are we doing things that the most high says we're supposed to do? Are we marked with that? Are people going to see that, <laughs> you know, and more importantly, is the most high going to see that or are they going to see what Hasatan is saying? Don't worry about what day you can worship any day you want to, but come on, everybody worshiping on Sunday, <laughs> you know, what, what, what is that mark? What is that showing? What, what are we, what are we portraying that way? You know, or, you know, yeah, it says that we're not supposed to eat these unclean things, but you know, it, it, it's all right now. <laughs> we can do it now, you know, and 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 that's a mark. Are we marked with no? We're gonna eat clean, or mark with yeah, we don't have to eat clean if we don't want to, you know, and these chakra type things and all of that. So powerful, powerful message, and and we really got to pay attention to what we're doing and what we're portraying, what we actually believe in, you know. So powerful, powerful message today, even. In, the two minute warning, very, very powerful message. Uh, hallelujah. All praise to the most high for his Ruach Hapadash. Hallelujah. All praise, honesty, me to the most high. Rock is called our thing. Thank you, elders. Um, before we uh, close and, and turn it over to Sarah Yohanan, 
Um, Adon Malaki, I see your name on today, Aki. Did you have any uh, words before we close out, sir? Okay, Shabbat Shalom. Um, I just put something in the chat um, in reference to uh, your lesson, Moray, and um, just uh, it just goes along with what you're saying. And I want to say to anyone that is new into this walk, um, you know, the, the law of the land here is the um, there is a rule of law that everything is predicated upon. And um, the heathen right now is changing and bending that rule as we speak. Um, but I want you to know that the most high, he has his own rule of law that he will never deviate from. And one that you should hold dear is that he does not change. It is written. So when you go through everything, you go through these religions, when you go through everything you've seen before, you know that the most high is standing firm on his word and he has not changed and is written. And this is one of the main rules that we need to hold to. So I just say Shabbat Shalom, Torah Rabbah, and Hallelujah, and I love you all, Mishpachah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Torah Aki, um, powerful words, uh, and we love you too. And Mishpachah, please hear what he said, because the most high is firm, like, our father is no joke, and all this soft, and you can just do what you want to do. I mean, that's not how the most high operates. Like, just because we are doing it, and, and, and you know, since he brought it up now, you've seen they said, when the most high don't see us, and, and Ecclesiastes said, because judgment does not come expediently, does not mean it's not coming. It said, the fool thinks the judgment is not coming. And again, the most high slow to anger. So therefore, though he may be allowing people to get super wicked, he's watching, and, and he does not change. He's seeing who's going to be steadfast. So please let us take our walk very seriously and let us return from respect to our father's name and his customs, his tradition, and his laws. Hallelujah. I told our don't. At this time, I'm going to yield to Ema Audrey first. And then sorry, Yohanan, uh, I have you for the closing, sir. And that everyone to tune in, we thank you for tuning in. May the most high bless you and your families. Thank you for listening in with us on this Shabbat. Hallelujah. Shalom again. I just want to remind those of you who um, have considered um, paying tithes and offerings or contributions to our Helping Hands ministry that the cash app and the other information will be listed in Telegram. So, Rabbi, may Allah be gracious upon you and may he grant you shalom. Have a great week. Have a shalom. Toda Ima, Toda Ima. Sorry, Hanan, the floor is not yours. Hallelujah. All one of you, all speaking the praise to the Most High, Yah, our King, our Heavenly Father, for this Shabbat day and for the culture study, for the two minute one, and then for the lesson today. You know, it's like things that kind of line up with each other. So told out yeah for the time and you all take to put these lessons together to bring it to us and to instill it into us. Hallelujah. Well, that's funny. Blessed be you who are Elohim. Our King who loved us with a great love, with surpassing compassion that you have on us, your children. Our Abba, our King, for the sake of our ancestors, our forefathers, who trusted in you, Abba, to who you taught the Torah of life, to be gracious also unto us and teach us O oh, our compassion, Elohim, have compassion on us, Abba, instill in our hearts the desire to understand and discern, to listen, to mock, to learn, and to teach, to observe, to perform, and fulfill all the teachings of your Torah, Abba. Enlighten our eyes in your Torah. Let our hearts cling to your commandments, Abba. Unite our hearts to love and to your set-apart name, Abba. 
we should never be ashamed. Let us, your children, pray to you, Abba. Always have trust in you, Abba. Always meditate and cry out to you, Abba. And not have the spirit of jealousy, Abba. I want against one another, Abba. That we have the spirit of love, Abba. Coming together as one. Praying, worshiping. I set apart one, our Elohim. I asking you to bring shalom, peace, Abba, to your children from the four corners of the quarters of the earth, Abba. Protect them, Abba. Continue to steal your Torah into their hearts, Abba. Continue instilling your love into their hearts, Abba. that we could come at one accord, Abba, and obey your set apart commands, Abba. Your Torah, Abba, the Torah of life. Your Torah is life. The life that you instill into us that you walk from us, your children, that you created, Abba. As your creation, Abba. Let us stand together, Abba. And do our due diligence on this earth to be that light and to have dominion over everything, Abba. Because we were created in your image, Abba. Abba told I, yeah, for the Shabbat, Abba. In all the Shabbat that we was able to experience and come together as a mitzvah, as a family, Abba. And learn of your word, Abba. Worship you, Abba. Have the joy of praising your set apart name, Abba. As we prepare for this upcoming week, Abba, we just ask for your continued protection as you always do through the week, Abba. So that when we do all our labor six days through the week, Abba, that our body, mind, soul, and spirit can rest on your Shabbat. Let's remember, Abba, the Shabbat is about you, Abba. You showed us that you labor and you created everything in six days, Abba arrested on the seventh day album. You are continue teaching us album through your spirit. You are continue teaching us album for putting your spirit into your servants album from the four corners of the earth album. That taking the time album to teach your word, to show us how to walk in your character. To show how we're supposed to keep the feast, Abba, in love, Abba. Told our Yafa elders that you instilled into our life, Abba. Who doing the duty of elder, Abba. Who's looking out for the young generation, Abba. Who's teaching the young generation Showing how to walk in the character of the Most High Yah. Told out to your teachers, Abba. I pray for them and their families, Abba. As I know, Abba, they go through things themselves, Abba. But they never show it when they come to teaching the word of the Most High Yah. 
So I ask you to bless their household album. Lift them up when they're down album. Because I see the love they have for you album. I see the love they have for your children album that they are taking the time to try to teach your word to bring your children back to you. I'm praying for your children that lost lost ones, Ivan. It's tough losing a loved one, Ivan. But we want to say, told our Yah, Ivan, that you get us through that toughness, that mourning that we have of a lost one, Ivan. Told our Yah for the family that you put into our life that help us. Get through the morning, Ivan. And I want to say, told I, yeah, for your continued healing of our sick, Ivan. Told I, yeah, for your healing hands, Ivan. Your healing spirit, Ivan. And I pray that we, your children, always keep faith and trust in you, our Elohim. Toda ya, toda ya, toda ya. Blessed be you, Yahuwah Elohim. Blessed be the name of Elohim. And blessed who come in the name of Elohim. Zawaro, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Shalom. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All praise and honesty meet to the most. Uh, Mishpaka, I definitely enjoyed fellowship with you all today so we can have our holy convocation together. Enjoy the rest of your time with the Father. Enjoy the rest of the time with your family. Enjoy your uh, uh, your feast meal for the day. Uh, Habib Shalom, Mishpaka. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Love you all. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom.